What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. You know, guys, I know a lot of you want to watch the Formula One races. You want to watch it live. That can be difficult in America. The, one of the best ways to do that is to use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets you catch every race easily. You get set up in under 10 minutes and enjoy HD streams throttle free. Here's how it works. If you don't have a US cable subscription, ESPN2 is a great way to tune in. Get ExpressVPN and then connect to a server location in the US, visit YouTube TV or PlayStation View and use the free trial. It's that easy. For those of you in the UK, you can catch every race on Sky Sports F1. Get ExpressVPN, connect to a UK server, and visit Sky Sports on Now TV. ExpressVPN works on your computer, phone, router, and consoles like Fire TV, so you can watch all the games from any device. And even when I'm not watching Formula One, I've got ExpressVPN on 24-7 because it also encrypts all my data, keeping it safer from hackers. Enjoy the remaining races this season in HD with the world's most trusted VPN, ExpressVPN. Use the special link today to get three months free at expressvpn.com slash smoking tire. That's expressvpn.com slash smoking tire. Three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash Smoking Tire. And of course, we are brought to you today by the Thinkware Dash Cam Range. Their best and latest dash cam, the U1000, is now available. It's able to capture clear and crisp videos of your drive. The U1000 is the very first two channel dash cam in the world to boast a native 4K UHD front and a 2K QHD rear resolution. In addition to its amazing video quality, the U1000 can save you money with its speed and red light camera alerts or make you a safer driver with lane departure and front collision warnings. With the convenient remote live view and parking impact alert cloud features, you can instantly check in your car or be notified of potential hit and runs. The U1000 and Thinkware's full range of dash cams are available online and in-store at thinkware.com. Best Buy and Amazon in the U.S. and Canada. And if you go to thinkware.com to buy, use code SMOKE20, that's S-M-O-K-E-2-0, SMOKE20, and get 20% off any regular price Thinkware dash cam. That's code SMOKE20, SMOKE20, at thinkware.com to redeem that coupon at checkout. Available in the U.S. and Canada on their website. And of course, we are also brought to you by Crown and Caliber. Guys, if you're looking to buy a luxury watch from Switzerland, uh, chances are you can save a lot of money for the exact same product if you buy it used. And if you're going to buy it used, the problems come up about buying stuff on the internet that is frequently faked, like watches. So you want to buy used, you probably want to buy on the internet, but you want a trusted source. My sponsor, Crown and Caliber, has been there for me uh, for years now, and they inventory 2,000 to 3,000 watches at any given time. They have a team of watchmakers and technicians. Every watch you see on their website, the photographs are of that actual watch. They have a mechanical guarantee so that if you get a watch, and even a vintage watch, and it doesn't work properly, they will make that right and make that watch work right for you. And they take in trades, especially they have a new deal. If you want to buy a brand new Breitling watch, I mean off a Breitling, Breitling's website, Crown and Caliber is their trade-in partner. So you can trade your old Swiss watch to Crown and Caliber for a credit at the Breitling store for a brand new Breitling. That's pretty cool. You could also get plenty of used Breitlings, Rolexes, Omega, AP, you name it, Cartier on Crown and Caliber's website. Use code TST175 if you buy a watch, any watch. That's $175 off for you for liking the smoking tire. TST175 at crowningcaliber.com. $175 off any watch in their store, uh, but only one per customer. Please buy more than one, but you can only use a discount once. I'm sorry about that, but it's the way it goes. 
All right, folks, uh, this was a great opportunity. I have always asked my friend Chris Harris to uh, to stop by the show when he is in town. His schedule uh, when he's filming his job uh, at Top Gear is just crazy. They have him all over the world. Uh, of course, Chris and I did four seasons together of the show Drive on NBC Sports, which is work that I'm, I'm very proud of. Uh, Chris continues his work uh, on Drive on NBC Sports with Zach now um, and is also still, of course, the host of BBC Top Gear, uh, and it's Chris Harris on the Smoking Tire Podcast. It's the motherfucking... Oh, remember Zach? Remember that? Zach was like, you shouldn't say the motherfucking Smoking Tire Podcast, because that's in the beginning of the show, and then YouTube will trigger, but then I was like... But I put the ads up front, <laughs> and that true. counts. <laughs> so, can you make some money out of this? Oh yes, good man. Yes, can and do. All the Mars. No. Can you? Can you, yeah. <laughs> can, can you give? Um, can you Balling give? On a can you give Zach some money? Just. <laughs> I I think we give Zach some Cassio. money. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he, I think we I give we give Zach this. some money. He gets What's paid that? to do this. What's the one of your? Is that a concoction? What is it? This is, is cold, it? this is coffee. Cold brew co- coffee. Okay. I don't trust you at all. <laughs> what What would I put in this? Between oh, the two of us, you'd have who's better at You'd drinking. have cinnamon and it's, you'd have weird oh, stuff. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Ew, <laughs> Zach, stop looking Saffron. at me while other people are talking. I hate seeing me. What's happening, everybody? Smoking Tire Podcast, Thanksgiving week. Chris Harris is in the house. Hello, boys. And uh, in typical Chris Harris fashion, we don't hear from him for a long time. He texts and says, can you do a podcast in 12 hours? Because... I'm drunk and I won't remember this tomorrow. That second half of that part I made up might have made up, but it turned out to be true. <laughs> might have been true. I'm feeling a little bit worse for wear, but I'm still here. Welcome to the West Side. Thank you. Oh, we can't. We're not. We're not going to talk at all about specifically why you're here for the work reason, right? We can. We can say that I was doing the Baja okay. 1000. Right, and we cool. can, and we, because there was a GPS beacon on my car that showed that after mile 80, the vehicle's no longer moving. So you don't need to be a rocket scientist <laughs> to work out that I didn't finish the Baja 1000. Copy. But, but, the, but the full story, um, the amazing tale, the roller coaster yarn. All 80 of those miles. Well, you'll have to wait to watch that right. on, uh, on public broadcasting in the UK and later on BBC America in the US. Or torrented. No, yeah. Um, the uh, well, here you are now, and, and and if you had if you had finished, maybe you wouldn't be. So I suppose we should no, I still be budget. here. I would, oh, I would. Yeah, I still be here. Uh, anyhow, look, I'm only here for one reason. I want to talk about this Tesla truck. I got it uh, <laughs> uh, because because the seismic reactions that Teslas elicit in you just just keep me amused all day long. Um, because because I'm I'm trying to understand the Tesla Yeah, um, and and I I can't. It's the only part of our industry I can't deconstruct because I I normally like you. Can navigate a line between partisan beliefs of mm-hmm. our of our industry but this one I can't if I say the Tesla Model 3 is brilliant and yes. I have done on several occasions yes. there's still a percentage of the population that hates me because I've not said it's brilliant enough, enough. I, I don't know what it is or, <laughs> yes. or, that it, or that it can't solve the third world debt or it can't go to them. I don't know what it is but I I can't understand them and if I then say yeah. if I if I say for example the Tesla Model 3 is brilliant and then I say in isolation or in parallel the the Porsche Macan, sorry, Taycan is brilliant. Then, then by association, I'm dissing yes. the Tesla by admitting there might be something else on the planet. Yeah, it's it's a little culty. Uh, it's the problem with a cults little of, culty. Cults yeah. of, well, I'm trying to be kind. It makes the Spanish Inquisition it's, look like bloody nursery it's school. It's pretty culty. Yeah, and the truck is the perfect. Ex- is the truck is the watch this moment okay, of so, the cult. So, so it's the turning point of the cult. I'll if you buy some- that as real, you're in a fucking cult. That's drinking the, Kool- <laughs> that's drinking the Kool-Aid, literally. That is a yeah. big Kool-Aid Is there nothing brick. about it that you think is quite cool? <sighs> that oh my, is a the, Johnny Cap. The silence is deafening. No, there's... A, there's... I mean, look. Do I think it would be interesting if a company allowed you to buy an 80s movie prop that was a real car that you could drive? Do I find that interesting? Yeah. Funny thing is, there is a company that does that. It's called W Motors out of Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can buy any number of funky, weird-ass concepts. What about that is there are, fucking roadworthy? Okay, okay, there's a couple of... Things on that truck that are kind of like the tailgate. Like Zach's got the picture there with the with the four wheeler. The 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 tailgate with the built in ramp is something that's never been seen before in a that'd truck. Be very, very it's cool. kind of cool. When they made the I mean, step, if, is a big if deal. we're gonna stretch and find something positive to say about it, there you go. The, the I, ramp. So the ramp. I, 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 I don't think believe that that is view. a real thing that can be made. I mean, I, I think, think an electric truck will be but good. It, but it could be made, couldn't it? It. I mean. 
So I think it, it's I not think, that. Well, they built one or two, but I I don't think anything about that passes pedestrian standards or impact standards. We or, don't know that. He might. It might have. It might have navigated the Venn diagram of pedestrian safety standards <laughs> without us knowing. Let, let me just add one thing here. What I can see from the outside is that if you're if you're a disruptor, which is what Elon is, you know, he just sees something and he disrupts. If you're a disruptor, then then the 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 barriers of of what you can do are are much much larger. They're broader. Oh, yeah. So so he can look at a subject and come at it from a tangent that we haven't even seen before, and that does mark him out as quite a bright bloke. Um, you know, he he's profoundly clever, and and he makes rocket land and stuff that I can't really understand. <laughs> But can I just but, say that he hired people that makes rockets? Yeah, okay, I don't fine. think he wrote the fucking landing code on the rocket. Look, you just got to calm down for a minute. Do you know right? how often I hear he makes rockets <laughs> let, land? Let, he let, didn't write the landing code in the rocket. Stop for a minute. Stop for a minute. You're fro- you're literally frothing at the mouth. Okay? There's probably a really quiet <laughs> black li- lady that wrote the code that, for the like, fucking just, rocket. Like just net, just uh, be Apollo quiet 13. for a minute. So he's come in and he's he's looked he's looked at at the best selling class of vehicle in the U.S., which is quite baffling for a European, which is a massive truck mm-hmm. with a flatbed in it that doesn't often seem to have anything in it mm. um, and he said well let's just go out there and do something completely off the scale and make the world talk about us well he seems to have succeeded in that if 150,000 people have genuinely written a deposit check then 200. the world it's a hundred dollars Chris is it a hundred dollars it's a hundred dollars no one a hundred dollars is the kind of listen if if this is a real product and I do not believe it is okay just for a second, think about the fact that Tesla currently produces three vehicles, three production vehicles. S, X, X three. Okay, three. They have taken deposits on five further vehicles that do not exist. Reservations. Reservations, excuse me. There's five further But you ve- take a reservation out on a hotel room? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Look, okay, so I, I, there's a difference between reservation I and deposit, don't see, by the way. I don't, view this, uh, I don't view this as being as absurd as you do, partly because being a European, the, the concept of a truck is quite foreign. So to disrupt that or, or kind of subvert it, I, I think I, you're. I, I think the problem is you're looking at it like you're taking something weird, and you're taking something that, in my opinion, is not normal, and you're normalizing it. And I'm not talking about the styling of the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. I believe. But there's no real styling to the vehicle, is it? It's Look, a, it's basically a, it's a, it's a, someone's taken a geometry set from school and thrown it at the wall. Right. <laughs> right. I believe that Tesla's business model is not selling cars because without the federal tax credits and shit, they lose money on the cars. They all lose money. All the cars do. And they're selling a $70,000 car for $50,000. Like they're losing fucking money on the cars. If you if you put everything in, their business model is Every quarter or half or whatever it is, you have to fucking hype. You got to hype, and then you got to get new investors, and then you got to use the. You got to take a risk. So what the hype is? Crazy looking fucking space truck, really really low reservation bar, hundred dollars. Easy to just click on your phone, Apple Pay, boom, done. No real contract. And now they go to Morgan Stanley and they go, I got two hundred thousand orders for this. Twenty million dollars. They're fucking bragging about this yeah. shit, which, by the way, I th- I suspect, based on what people I've read, is that it's an SEC violation for Elon to brag about the number of they orders. They do that all the which time. Which Elon violates <laughs> SEC regulations <laughs> constantly, like constantly and in the open. It's a fucking, it's all crazy. But it is my belief that they have no intention of building that. But but surely he's he has an intention to tackle well, that maybe market. No, it's maybe the largest no selling in- vehicle in this country. Fine. Maybe not no in maybe not no intention. But by the time 2021, 2022, whatever comes around, it, 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 it won't even fucking matter. No I'm, one will care about the $100 anymore. I'm just going to throw some 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 <coughs> gasoline onto the bonfire now. Please do. What about the tug of war video with the F-150? <laughs> Come on, Matt. Tell us about that without having a coronary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just have a problem with fucking lying liars and, and, then, and the people who worship them. That's it. I have a review coming out on Wednesday of the Model 3 performance, and I thought it was fucking great. That was great, Mm. but you can think the car is great, and you can go. This fucking guy is over here scamming you. Donald Trump owns a couple of buildings for real. He really owns a couple of buildings. (laughs) He really rents a couple of condos. He's also a giant fucking scam artist. That's his. That his real job is. (laughs) Is that anyone we're not going to libel in this podcast? No, no, no. no. (laughs) I look. I'm not saying he should be locked up. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. I think people need to 
realize that I think they're being had. It's difficult. All isn't you it? have to do is here. All you have to do. My only bit of advice: you don't have to fucking shit on him on Twitter. You don't have to do anything. Just, just don't give him any money for something you can't take home with you. That's it. Yeah. You're giving him a zero interest loan out of your pocket for an utter fucking fantasy. <laughs> And then he makes up, like, the video, the F-150 video. Here's my problem with the F-150 video. He made up a game and then cheated at it. <laughs> right? I'm, la- now, I'm laughing like Muttley now, sorry. Every, <laughs> I don't mean to. Every automaker has semi-disingenuous ads where their trucks seemingly do impossible things, right? But they do those ads by making up a game that they know they can win. Yeah. yeah. And then doing that, and it's a cool visual but, thing. But Elon towing, made up a game and then cheated. Towing an F-150 <laughs> in two-wheel drive is, and then for everyone to go, look at this. Isn't that I mean, you, don't, you, you don't need to be Einstein to work out that only two of the wheels are spinning. Right. Yeah. Well, the like, video cuts off very quickly. Yeah. That's, the wheels start to smoke, and then it's like, and it's over. <laughs> it does right. smoke. Smoking, 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 and yeah. then video. Look, if this is real, why was he hitting the thing with a dead blow hammer and not a sledgehammer and calling it a sledgehammer? If this is real, why is he talking about bullet proof windows before immediately smashing them and then trying to issue some kind of horseshit correction video later. Like every little piece, it's like if the big thing isn't a scam, why all the tiny little lies that build up the what I find house? really what I find really difficult is that the I've never I've never in my time come across a product that's so good because I think the Model 3 is a great car. That's surrounded by so much bullshit, yeah. and, I, I, and it's very difficult to separate the brilliance of something like a Model yeah. Three. You know, this is a vehicle that's you know largely come out of nowhere compared to how long most car manufacturers have existed, and they they really have smashed it out of the park. It's a fantastic car, but the but this sort of partisan, almost religious cult that surrounds it makes almost for me makes it difficult to yeah. to want one. Well, I I I I was about to order a Model Three. I, I've I've still got it coming. But I'm, but I'm worried that having that car is like wearing a badge that says I'm part of a club I don't want to be a part of. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I, the one thing I hadn't foreseen, and it must be worse over here, is that we don't have many supercharger stations in, in the UK. There's a few. And when you stop off, you're expected, it's almost part of the contract to stand oh, around no, chat. and just <sighs> talk about how great everyone and it's, you know, <laughs> That's the worst. You know, know exactly. it, it might as well say Tabernacle Choir on the exactly. side of it. And, I, and I, don't, I don't want to be part of that club necessarily. I'll happily go, yeah, I think it's quite clever. Yeah. But I don't want to stand there and 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 evangelically, you know. Did you ever basically see, um, jack someone off? Did you watch the Theranos documentary on Netflix? Do you know what Theranos is? No. It was a big thing here. It was about this young woman who claimed to have invented this new type of blood testing technology that would revolutionize blood testing. Right? You could do it. At, you could do it at home. You could take a tiny little sample and this tiny little sample, right? Instead of these big needles and blah blah blah. All these smart people invested. All these smart people got on the board. The whole thing was bullshit. But because all these people thought they were doing something for the greater good, they were actually willing to let a lot more go than the kind of people who maliciously lie. That's sort of the the the, the moral sure. of that documentary. Yeah. And it's and it, and I've heard it a few times. Like if you define someone as the good guys. Which well, I believe that Elon Musk has wisely positioned himself as sort of the savior and 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 big oil or the bad guys. So when you're the good guys and people sign up to be in the good guys, and by the way, people have referral codes, so they have incentives, financial, to share good news. When you f- picture yourself as a good guy, you'll let all kinds of shit go. If you think it's doing, it's well, it's righteous. Isn't it? The Look at fucking of, Trump. It's every religion out there. Every religion out there too. It's that's how that's it is. What I it mean is closer to origin, religion than a car a mm. car company. I have to say, but I don't know. When you're cruising along in a Model Three, it's lovely in silence, and you put your foot down. I I, I drove one back yeah. from the place in the UK where they distribute them, in, I think it's near Slough, and I came off the motorway, and it was a sort of greasy night, and a guy behind me in an RS4 Avant, so a B8, the last one. Um, was behind me and he was clearly keen to get past me and he thought he he clearly didn't know what it was he thought what what's this Toyota Camry doing holding me up <laughs> we got to a dual carriageway and I let him get him get by the side of me and then gave it the beans it is quite a joyous moment yeah. isn't it it's lovely because you just disappear and they they are so confused if you people. want to drive like a complete piece of shit it's the perfect car because the silence 
they get way less mad <laughs> when, when it's yeah. not associated. You know, you can do a crazy dickhead move and dive bomb someone, but when it's not associated with the burble tune, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No longer yeah. a shit bag. No, you're quite right. Yeah. And, I, and I, you know, if you if you drill a hole in your exhaust and drive at 20 miles an hour, people. You know, they wave their fists yeah. at you, mm-hmm. but in a Tesla, you can do what you want. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me, recently I saw some, something I haven't seen for a long time. Someone driving like an utter prick in a Prius, and I loved it. <laughs> so, Came around a corner on three wheels, fully lit in a Prius, and I just thought, I just love the commitment. I hadn't yeah. seen that before. It's a bit like seeing your aunt do smack. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, just, you, incongruous. You get fucked up, Doris. <laughs> <laughs> Cab when, I go out, uh, when I go out to the canyons really early in the morning, right? Like in the summer, I like to go up early and shoot before rush hour traffic. And then in the winter, I shoot after rush hour traffic. So I typically witness a portion of rush hour traffic. And the kind of people who take rush hour traffic over the canyons, you know, they're trying to have a little fun in their commute. So you see cars of all types that have nothing to do with sports. Like just sh- little shit boxes, box vans. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> on it, you know I mean? <laughs> on it. <laughs> Brakes on fire. It's fucking good. Have you driven Taycan? Yeah, I've had to go in a Taycan, um, and we've done a film on that for our next season of Top Gear. Have I? And I've just written about it as well. So, I, and it gets published soon. I can give a few things away. Um, uh, a bit of a game changer, really. I, I think. Did you drive Turbo or Turbo S? I drove the Turbo S. You've yeah. driven it as well. Turbo you? S. Yeah. yeah. So it's bad my, shit. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, it's difficult to say this. But it's probably too fast for the public road. <laughs> yeah. uh, if I was going to order one, I'd have it a bit detuned. I'd have a. I'd get the 4S, probably. The 4S would be yeah. enough for me. Because I found myself, it was a bit like riding a really fast motorcycle. I, I was just constantly frustrated every time I put my foot down. I was out of sync with every other car. Even a fast car, you're yeah, just yeah. up its backside the whole time. I think the game changing part for me is that. It's not a. It's not a. It doesn't alter the electric car landscape. It doesn't do anything a Tesla can't do, right? right. But what it does do is it confirms that that there's a future for car enthusiasts that you can take this platform and you can manipulate it we all knew you could but, but as an object it, it stands up it's beautifully built it's got everything you'd want and i think if you if you don't like cars you'd still buy a tesla because a tesla for half the money does nine tenths of what a tie can, can a tesla do. is a great car for yeah, people right. who hate cars yeah exactly if you want to drive a phone a tesla is a it's, perfect it's, it car. is and it's remarkably yeah. competent but the yeah. Taycan has a you know has a breadth of ability that is quite astounding what do you think i liked that i could do a full bore launch control with like 40 miles left on the battery like you can hammer the shit out of it until yeah. it's fully dead and that was great and just the fact that it has basically 992 steering it's like oh well that that was really gratifying for me because if you did the pepsi challenge on the car and you were on an airfield i reckon i could spot it was a porsche from the steering oh yeah and that you know fair play to them for doing that that can't have been easy i i I think it's a a remarkable motor car and the fact they've they've really only scratched the surface of what you can do with the torque vectoring and everything else because it's quite it's still quite basic in the way they've when you turn everything off and off is off. You can is do it? oh, you can do massive. Slides I only drove in it. it on a road. Oh, really? Can oh, you, you can do. But, like, but, will it go rear drive if you? If yeah, you do? it'll go full rear drive. Oh, that's and, awesome. And you can imagine with that torque, they've got an issue really with the tire. The thing weighs two and a half tons, mm-hmm. but with all its vectoring, it feels like about one point seven. Mm. It feels about as heavy as an M three sedan to me. Yeah. That's how it feels when you in terms of agility. It's low. It feels yeah. it's really yeah. really low. But but what it does once you get the thing lit on a surface, the the rear tire is just destroyed. I mean, is it, it easy to modulate while you're sideways? Like yeah, a, it's not bad. I mean, it wants to straighten itself up. So what? Yeah. What? It's a bit like driving a rally car. You know, you get it in on an angle. The moment you boot it, a load of torque goes to the front wheels. And it wants to straighten up. Right. So a G, an old R34 GTR. But without GTR. noise yeah. or without attack, can you modulate properly? You you can. I mean, yeah. it's it's not there. It's not like an M5. Right. Yeah. But but for a first attempt, good God. Well, yeah, you have to watch the video. Yeah. It's, well, it's pretty special. Did you find, so I drove that M3 drift car for drive, uh, the electric episode we were on, but I was in the desert by myself. And <laughs> You're a sociable chap, aren't you? I am very sociable <laughs> chap. But, so I thought when I was going into it that it would be really hard to drive that car because, okay, there's only one gear. So what if you add a little too much throttle, suddenly the wheel speed goes from 60 to 120 or whatever, and you loop it. But I found that you just kind of feel the car through the seat and the tire and the wheel the way you do normally. This is an, it's an electric it's, M3, is it? Electric yeah. M3, sorry. Yeah. So Look, did, did you have the same thing? No, I think, I think if you, the, the reality is if you calibrate a throttle pedal, whether it's attached to an internal combustion engine that's petrol or diesel or an electric motor, if you calibrate it to work in a straight line under normal behavior, 
it'll be absolutely fine for going mm. sideways. It's just it's the same thing, isn't it? Really, if you if it, if you've got a different calibration, then it's a problem. But I just I think if you've got a car you can drive normally, then you'll you'll be able to slide yeah. it. I don't care what it's attached oh. to. I'm fine. glad you can go full off. That's a good. That's good to know. No, you and I, and I wouldn't advise it on the public <laughs> highway. I'm t- like I have you know you and I can both drive at most of our you know your limit is quite a bit higher than mine, but we can both drive it close to our limits while having a pretty normal conversation with a camera. Yeah. At a certain point, I mean, I was on a on a road that was public but empty. At a certain point, I had to stop talking and focus. And no, my like, palms like, got sweaty and it became a real like, oh shit, I need to fucking pay attention or I'm going to have a big crash. It, the, the numbers that come up on the dashboard <laughs> are just, it, it's like, it, it's, it's almost as if there's a sort of glitch in the system. You yeah. go tw- to 2660, why did it wait? <laughs> And it doesn't so much, it's one of those cars that you don't really notice the acceleration. You just arrive at a different part of the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time I, machine. I, I agree with you. It is, it's difficult to, to talk and drive it at the same time. I also found it disconcerting on the road that when it was slightly damp, I drove it in the UK where, of course, it rains the whole time. Mm. And and occasionally the front wheels would spool up. Oh. In a, and that's a very strange feeling. <laughs> yeah. in, you know, it's, got, it's, it's just clawing at the surface. I think the I think the size of it is odd because I think it, you can't really fit anyone in the back of it. It's like kind of too big to be small and too small to be big a it's, little bit. Yeah, it's a three and a half series. If you can't fit someone behind mm-hmm. you, that's a problem. Yeah, because I sort of expect that no one's going to. No, fit and I, you know, I, s- I do sit basic with my balls on the steering wheel. Yeah, you're you uh, sit all close and shit. But I, and I'm tiny, but even then, there's not much room in the back of it. But it, it's a fantastic car. It, for me, the the biggest problem is the sticker price in Europe. They're coming what out. Is it at, in Europe? They're coming out at one hundred and sixty, hundred seventy thousand pounds, which is what two over two hundred thousand. Yeah. There's, the there's one no I drove discounts was, or anything over there. There's no like we get tax credits and bullshit. Oh, you don't have a tax. Else. You they, must have a tax credit. You will, but it's not yeah. going to alter it massively. And I think Porsche is. I think a few people have cancelled orders because it is just more than they expected. I mean, hundred. It's the one I drove was one hundred and eighty-seven thousand U.S. dollars, which is really, really expensive. They'll sell every single one here, though. Oh, in L.A. Okay. for sure. So yeah, in California. Also, also, I think it's a great-looking thing. I really like the way that for a Porsche, they've really made the bodywork look like it's melted over the wheels. It's got a wider rear track than you think. It's it. It doesn't actually look that factory. Fa- sorry, factory. The 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 stance and the and the ride of it, the way it sits on the road, looks a bit aftermarket. It sits yeah. so low. So they've nailed it on that front. And I don't know about you, the one that I drove, the interior quality was off the chart. The mm-hmm. It was exactly the same as 992, yeah. which is about the best out there. Yeah. I, th- I think it was. I don't know. I wouldn't say, I don't know if I could judge it as being better, but the one thing I don't like are the fucking 4G Auto wheels. <laughs> the, the wheel, yeah, those dude. wheels are SEMA 2005. Yeah, uh, that, I agree <laughs> that they they don't quite work, or they look like a BMW M wheel that's lost its center plate. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. what, I so think uh, it'll be prime for aftermarket. What does this do to the Tesla used car market? It doesn't affect it at all. It's a different game. I, I, think, think, it's a different car. I think I think when, I, when Volkswagen and Audi roll out theirs on this on the same tech, well, obviously this is going to become yeah. the next. Then I think Tesla has some competition, but but Tesla also has infrastructure. And if I was if I was looking to buy as I am an electric car in the UK. UK, once you've used a supercharger, it's very difficult to see what you'd want. How, I mean, how you even the, the Porsche has the 800 volt. You know, it's got the. It's got. Yeah. It's actually faster. And they're, in build, LA. And, and they're building them in the UK now. Yeah. We've got what? one. There's one. There's one at Reading. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's two in LA. And one of the ones, we, the one I drove to on the launch is in fucking Burbank in a Walmart. And there's two of the fast, uh, two individual, let's call them pumps, whatever stations there. Uh, and the first one I tried didn't fucking work. <laughs> I had to use the other one. I was like, oh boy, this is going to be an uphill battle. That That's but, the thing. The, 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 the abilities of these vehicles are not in any doubt. I think the appeal, even for car enthusiasts, you know, I don't know about you, I've got you know, a lovely model of a Countach here, you're mm. lucky to own one of the most wonderful cars. Because you've got that in your life, mm-hmm. you want your everyday car to be silent. I, yeah. And I like the guilt-free yeah, motor. Yeah. I mean, it's not guilt-free, of course, this idea of it being zero emissions is utter bollocks, because cars should be tested from the moment the first bolt is hewn to when they're destroyed, in right. which case a Taycan is still quite a messy bit of kit, <laughs> so yeah. is a Tesla. Um, but, uh, so I like the idea of the silence, I like the idea of the 
instant talk. All of it works for me, but there's no infrastructure. So, so they've. It's, it's a problem here too, and we're in. It's we should be here. This is the center this of the is universe. The fucking and it's terrible here. You have to have a have a somewhere to charge at your house. And it's I, the only way it works. I, I I've thought about this a lot recently. And I've written about it a bit as well. And I just think that the the motor car serves a very particular purpose in our life. So my car is is absolutely at my disposal. I yeah. make the choices. It gives me freedom. And the moment the moment I have to start making allowances for my motor car. The moment I start having to factor in my life, alter my life for that motor car, it's no longer the piece of personal transportation that I signed up for. I might as well take a cab or get get an Uber or, or get on a train because it's becoming inconvenient. Yeah. I don't believe in inconvenient personal transport. I just think it's a it's an oxymoron. I want to get in it and it to take me with the minimum resistance to where I want to go. And if I have to start thinking, well, I've got to go there for an hour and then they, I, I, I lose yeah. patience with it. it need, there needs to be more of them and they need to be faster. And if, they, if you can get a charge to like 10 minutes you know, or less, I think most people would find that happy, would, would be happy. With In that. the UK, we can't even repair a road. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Well, what. like, I think it's a problem here, too. I'm trying to build one building. I mean, you should you should have seen. I. Uh, How many charging stations are you going to have there? Two, but only be like I'm limited to how much power the city will give me. I'm only allowed 400 amps for my whole building. And so if and it's taken me. Holy shit. It's taken me weeks to get one cable one cable from the pole to the building has taken fuck weeks months months so how long forget wiring the city how, it just how lo- so how long happen. until la is electrified in fucking terms- decades dude yeah decades no. just because the infrastructure can't exist this uh, the infrastructure could exist if the bureaucracy were fully committed so what if big oil but, if big oil turned around and said we're gonna do it that would be ironic because Big Oil ripped up our GM and Firestone ripped up the LA streetcar system in the 40s and to sell buses and tires and fuel. And now look where we're at. They, could, they could probably that, do it quicker for sure, but I think it would still be very difficult just because of the draw on the power grid. You know, things are it's trickling in now and you have the Tesla superchargers are built and you have electrified How America many supercharger built, stations go. are there in LA do you think? You could get a map. I mean, they, they, they've done a pretty good job. They it, they have added them. I mean, they just need to have it at your house. There's probably 20 in L.A. 20 yeah. supercharger stations. In the greater, greater L.A. area. I mean, yeah. you know, 20 LA, stations with six each or something. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Great. In the greater L.A. area. I'm, I'm guessing. But Zach's going to get us a map right now. That's just that's just not many, is it? Look, you can just uh, click mm. superchargers on the bottom there. Yeah. OK. No, that's not all superchargers, is it? The red, the red ones. Um, reds are superchargers. Reds are superchargers. Oh yeah, so so there you go. How far does that go? It's How, not. It's not many. I mean, this is down to Manhattan. That's Beach. not that many. So the, that what, many. what we're looking at is a, is probably twenty five miles vertical by fifty miles horizontal. That's what that map is right there. Equally, you know, L A residential tends to have off street parking. Okay, Correct. most of it does. So you have got an option there. Whereas in U K cities are mostly terraced, so they're either yeah. fully attached, semi semi attached. You've mm. got to park your car on the street. Yeah, and the, and there was lots of noise about induction charging a few years ago, but I've noticed that a lot of the car makers have gone very very quiet on that recently. And I heard some stories that they did some tests. You know, you, you need to make sure that if little Johnny rolls his tennis ball underneath the car, you can get it out. <laughs> and apparently, you know, they found out that if you if if a cat goes under there, you know, comes out <laughs> <A> hamburger <laughs> looking. Like <laughs> barbecue <laughs> and so and they think they've gone very quiet on that idea but I don't the idea think there's dig- anything worse there's nothing, nothing wrong with a plug except like in LA they try, started attaching chargers to street lights which I think is kind of interesting it's a novel but, idea uh, but I, I see some by like by meters too yeah, like in, in, yeah. again I have to speak from a UK perspective if you have a visible cable anywhere near a member of the public. They'll cut it. They'll cut it. Yeah. Or, they'll, or they'll do something stupid with it. Or they'll yeah. rip the terminal out of your car. It's just going to happen. That's a problem here too, is people just, Americans can't be trusted with anything they don't own. I find the whole electrification thing really strange. I vacillate hugely between thinking it's the future, between thinking it's the right thing to do. Then I think of lithium mining and cobalt mining and all the damage that's doing. And I think it's morally compromising. I, I, I just have this awful underlying fear that we've been pushed in a direction by legislation and politicians. And as we all know, the the worst people at making any decision yeah. for the good of mankind are politicians. I am concerned that what has happened is the captains of industry have convinced us that if everyone does their little part, we can fix climate change. <laughs> when actually... If like ten companies really fucking cleaned up their act, 
everyone else could drive fucking Hellcats. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Bozy just did the math. Right. Pull, did you pull out my Twitter? It's heavy. It's heavy. Bo- it's heavy shit. Big ships. Yeah, well. Those heavy ships, ships and pl- airplanes. But it's it's cargo shit. It's it's us. It's our it, obsession it, with having shit brought. But to it's us. so much. You know, it's such a soft target. The motor car. It's so someone easy. Put to a, point someone to someone put a tweet up about banning the Daytona 500 because. Uh, of the emissions or the carbon footprint of the Daytona 500 and Bozy did a, c- a comparison of the entire Daytona 500 carbon footprint including the RVs and all the fucking shit it should be the top of my Twitter it says Bozy math is good math uh, or something like that and uh, he compared all the carbon footprint of everything to like one New York to London flight <laughs> and it was like the same yeah, it's, it's, it's absurd and I you know I've been to a few events recently and I, I made some some negative there, right noise there. about Bozy SUVs. Math, good. That's there you it. go. Yeah, I made some negative noise about SUVs last week, and everyone got in a right old froth about it. And then they said, "Why well, you've gone to do Baja? How can you hate off-road vehicles?" Because an off-road vehicle, off-road, is absolutely fine, people. But I don't understand why you need off-road capability weighing three fucking tons <laughs> to go and do the school run. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't wear my hiking boots in the living room. I don't. I wear a pair of daps, as we call them in the UK. Yeah. I don't need to, and I just the whole, why has the why has the world become so obsessed with SUVs? I mean, there's some there's some damning statistics that are in the Guardian in the UK a couple of weeks ago that at the motor vehicles, if you if you look at motor vehicles' contribution to the increase in CO two globally, they they actually don't figure. But if you look at SUVs, then that drags the motor car in because SUVs are effectively so much heavier and inefficient mm-hmm. than normal cars. They're the second biggest net contributor and in increase over the last eight years, just I think after shipping or concrete. Yeah. But, but because we drive, for some reason, we now drive cars that are bigger and heavier and just more inefficient than, than they were the, the, the percep- 10 years ago. The, the perception is bigger and heavier means safer. It means more convenient. Means more options. the The wagon here in the United States has just taken this turn that people don't want to have anything to do with a wagon and the stigma that goes around with it. Like there's some sort of '50s housewife, and I mean, I, I own a wagon, but my you know my ex wife would would never have it. Hatchbacks, wagons, all that stuff. It, it's looked at like some sort of soccer momish kind of a thing. And but an SUV has the perception of safety and, and, and clout and class and luxury. But there's a lot of things that we used to do not that long ago that we thought were absolutely normal that we now frown upon. I mean, if I sat next to you in a restaurant and sparked up a cigarette, you'd be horrified. Yeah. But 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that was absolutely fine. So you can change behaviors relatively quickly. Yeah. And, and the car makers, they come back at people like me and say, well, we're just making what, what people, people want. want. That's not good enough. Yeah. No, it, you, it, you can influence behavior. Yeah, oh, because they, they especially can. when there's dealers, because the dealers are actually the ones ordering from the car makers, right? And the dealers are ordering what will be the easiest for them to sell. So if the dealers were to change their ordering habits to make other, you know, I don't know. I, don't I like know to think answer. that we're, we're quite a sensible species. You know, the reason why we've dominated this planet is we're clever and the other stuff but some of our behaviors are, are really <laughs> odd there's the suv adds nothing to our lives it costs us more money yeah. it's more inefficient it does i mean it, it, to say i sit higher the next person that says i sit higher i i, I don't know what i'll do i'll, I'll fucking stab well, the, them the, or something the funny part about that is is more and people buy crossovers and suvs now you're all sitting at the same height again so you, yeah if you were the first one to buy an suv yeah you can see over the cars in front of you yeah but now my only the same defense now. i will i will slightly devil's advocate the go. crossover slightly and i don't fucking own one you saw my van it's a 91 yeah the <laughs> The because of the, the the impact standards and all that, the shoulder heights of the cars have gotten higher, which has made the windows get smaller. If you want to get a greenhouse that resembles a greenhouse that a car had in the '90s, you have to get a crossover now. Yeah, an E30, your E34 M5 Touring has roughly the same greenhouse as like a Mazda CX-7. Yep, yep. You know, not the same. actually visually looks a bit odd from the side now. <laughs> yeah, 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 look at all that glass. They yeah, do look like that. Right, and so I think that uh, part of it is, you know, bumpy roads. Part of it is I want to sit up high, and part of it is I don't feel cramped in this fucking bunker like a lot of cars I, I, I like now. to think that the car industry has a sense of collective solidarity that, you know, even though GM's against Ford and against Volkswagen, they've got to realise that, that this industry needs to exist for them to make money and to survive. And OPEC style, if they all sat down around a table, 
would they choose the SUV as their PR piece? Would they say this is how we want to promote our activities? This is this is our future. If, if I was them, I'd I'd run a mile. I'd say, can't we configure between us something clever? In Europe, in the nineties, well, late eighties to early nineties, we had a thing called the MPV, which is a bit you, you call them minivans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, they, Ma- but, the Mazda MPV. Yeah, but we yeah. had we we had they were it was a classic car called a multi-purpose vehicle. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it's like in between a hatchback and a minivan. So we had right? a thing a thing a car called the Renault Espace. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Now the really Renault weird looking, right? But they were so clever because yeah. this car had the footprint of a sedan, mm-hmm. but it was higher. It was on a space frame, so actually it was lighter, and it had seven seats. It was more efficient, and people bought them. They bought them in droves. People in Europe bought them. They did, and then we had another car. The Renault did an, another another piece of wonderful disruption called the Scenic, which was basically a Megan again, oh, yeah, higher, higher, taller, more space. So, so the car companies can lead. They yeah. can lead with clever technology. Mercedes with the A Class. Now, if they hadn't rolled it when they were doing the Alt test, I have a funny feeling the A the original A Class is still the cleverest piece of car design I've ever seen since I've been doing this job. It was a remarkable vehicle. It had had an engine that would submarine under the seats in a crash, and yet the interior was about the size of an estate car. They're massive, but it didn't sell because people thought they were driving around in a, you know, in a in something very, very ugly. It made them, it said bad things about them. In America, because, I mean, I, you know, I've driven enough in Europe to know that, like, the size of a car makes a difference. You can't just drive an F-150 around Italy or France or England and, and it, do, it doesn't fucking feel right. It's like, it's gigantic. But in America, with the ex- very rare exception of, like, the West Village and parts of Boston and really, really old, by our standards, right, we have, so, so we, not really very old. No, we have yeah. the... Con- right, so we're not really very old, but like compared to your fucking house and shit, but like, <laughs> you know, it's it's all standardized, right? So yeah. y- you just get closer and closer and closer and closer to the edges of the lines you've been given. What's really interesting is, of course, that because this market is so dominant, I know China's big, but you know now fingers have been burnt in China, we'll go back to cars being designed for the US market because mm. you're consistent, you're stable. Increasingly, cars are designed. The big luxury cars are designed for the U- for the U.S. market, and they are becoming unusable. It's certainly in, in Europe. In, in Europe. Yeah. I mean, I'd say is a uh, Cullinan like absurd in the U.K. I wouldn't sit in one in the U.K. <laughs> I've sat in one in the U.S. I wouldn't bother in the in the U.K. What a shit box. <laughs> um, but the but something like a uh, a G class, yeah, not, yeah. not a G wagon, but the G oh, class the G Mercedes. Class, yeah. GL, you know that yeah. though, that's a. I think that's the best of them. That's the most practical, it's versatile. It's in the U.K. It's massive. Yeah. You know you can't relax. You, you're you're on both white lines the whole time. Isn't like, that what we had in the U.K. like three years ago with yeah. for cars with R? We oh yeah, yeah. Our big Harman got a flat bike. It was terrifying to drive. I that was. I remember, I remember we had a puncture. Who was it? Who was Armin, it you that fired? Armin, no, Armin, Ar- Armin who fired, lovely Armin, who fired it into a curb coming out of Bilth Wells in Wales. <laughs> and I remember, so I'm with you lot, and there's basically a load of really gnarly looking Americans, especially with Farrow, who was a bit shaved head and looking angry. Yeah. So we, we pull off into this car park space to try and work out how to fix the tire on this thing, which is blown to bits, and we've got a tight schedule. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then a load of, and I, I can't, I've got to be careful using the word, but a load of um, people that sell things from the back of white vans, who pikeys basically, so what they do is, they just drive around and try and sell you what is you have to assume is contraband or stolen. Yeah. So they turn up and they just see two people. They don't realize there's six large Americans lurking behind the car. And they wind the door back and go, "Do you want to buy some loudspeakers?" <laughs> and I'm thinking, and they look quite angry. And I'm thinking, I'd rather they went away. And then all these Americans swung out and went, "Hey, dude!" And they went, "Bye!" And just they slammed the door shut and did a runner really, really quickly as far as going, "What do they want?" <laughs> they wanted to sell you some loudspeakers <laughs> by the side of the road in Mid Wales. <laughs> so funny. not the first time someone tried to sell me speakers. Actually. But but I think. The, the size of cars is really notable. A Ferrari, fair play to Ferrari, they do lots of things wrong. But I love the fact that the F12 was a smaller car than the 599. You know, the that, F12 is and the and the A12 is are, is like big, but also kind of kind of compact. You, you drive, actually, uh, uh, you drive a five nine nine in the UK. It's, again, it's unpleasant. You just constantly, you know, you're clinching a sphincter, worrying about hitting something. But the F12 is noticeably smaller. So this is a car company that made they made a car that was smaller and lighter than the one before. 
Why, why can't we do that? Why, why can't we make some cars that are a bit smaller? Why because does the next S-Class have to be bigger than this one? Well, that's another problem with people is that people go, oh, I love the 3 Series. I just wish it was bigger. And then we go, well, why don't you buy the 5? And they go, well, I can't afford the 5. So they make the 3 bigger, even though they do make they it slightly more expensive. They customers. Mini Coopers, same thing. Like it's, but I love it's the way that, <laughs> particularly when, when... Because they listen to customers, Minis are now... Oh, maxis. Ma- yeah. You yeah know. And the Maxi was a different thing in the UK. For the 2002 to 06 Mini, R53 Mini, that's a perfect size vehicle. It is. And I'm, when you I see was, the new I'm a one, huge person, and I drove one, and it was so comfortable. When Why you look did that at the new Mini? Big? It's an abomination. It's ridiculous. God, absolutely no, ridiculous. We always want nobody, more space. Nobody here you in know? the U.S. wants to be the first one to say, "I'll take the smaller one," or it, it's not. It's not perceived in in the U.S. If you go from a larger car to a smaller car, it's going to be perceived that the quality has been degraded. It, it's a weird thought process here versus there because here it's all about just more. Yeah, it's got to be more. Just get the it biggest is. thing you can afford. Okay, look, we have watch, road, you need if you watch the ads on TV right now, we're running. They were having Black Friday sales and specials a month ago. They, they <laughs> no, they don't. We don't. We're not even waiting for the Black Friday. Which I don't know if you if you know what Black Friday is. is the yeah, day after yeah, the, okay. Yeah. So. We don't even wait for Black Friday anymore. Now it's Black Friday's like a month long sale now. It's the size of the drinks that I I, I judge it on that. <laughs> but, but as it as a as a humble European, if I go somewhere and, I, and they say, "Do you want a large drink?" and I, I said, "I wanted a large drink," that yeah. that is a dump churn of fuel. <laughs> yeah. This thing I can't hold it in one hand. Yes, the big gulp is a national embarrassment. It's, I know. How many liters is the big gulp? It's, well, it's, uh, it's grown over time, like the mini and the <laughs> one fifty. I think it's. I think the three big gulp. You extrapolate leader? this yeah. out. Be at 100 ounces you know, in, or 125 in, ounces in, now. In 20 years' time, 100, how, that's 128 ounces. Yeah. 100. <laughs> the history. <laughs> wow, Big Gulp's got a real Wikipedia page, doesn't when, it? When's it, you know, where does it end? When does people turn around and go, we don't need this anymore? At the hospital. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't. They, they don't. There is no end to oh, it. Oh, look, in 2012, 7 Eleven downsized the double gum from 64 ounces to 50 ounces. They so have one the called Super Legera. The Extreme <laughs> Gulp is 128 <laughs> ounces. That's a gallon. That is a, a US gallon. gallon. Extreme, Extreme gulp. gulp. Can you imagine what a gallon of Mountain Dew does to your bladder <laughs> or your body? Jeez. Oh what, the, uh, what the inside of your truck smells like. Afterwards. It comes with a side of insulin. So you <laughs> just, yeah, ready to just go. should say sponsored by diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> so gross. No, I, I think I think what we need is either you need a moment uh, in time that causes profound change. Uh, sadly, historically, those things tend to be called wars, and I don't yeah, yeah. really want a war. Or, or you need a, a, ban- a bunch of very clever thinkers that can persuade you that there's a different way and I, I suppose in my in my adulthood that moment for me was the Lotus Elise when the cars were beginning to get more and more powerful more and more expensive and you know, little Lotus came along and said we don't need that we'll take the engine from a from a little Rover and we'll stick it in a lightweight fiberglass and aluminium sports car that weighs 650 kilograms and we promise you this thing will be as good to drive as a Boxster and they delivered on that of course commercially it was a disaster because they made about 28 cents on every single one sold <laughs> But what they did was they made everyone love this thing. And and I, I just hope there's another Lotus Elise well, moment. Do you think cars are going to get, like, I kind of think the middle is falling out. I think we're getting a bunch of anonymous eggs. Yep. I think we're getting way more flappy paddle supercars than we really need. Yeah. Uh, and then I think we're getting weird specialty vehicles like... You know, strange stuff that is being built in low volume, like, um, oh, fuck me, Morgans and uh, Lotuses in a certain extent. Well, my, my like, world, I don't know about you, my world, I'm, I'm, I'm still testing new cars, but not like we used to. Mm. I don't have the, I miss it slightly. The turnover we used to have when we were starting those YouTube channels was just different. But now all I seem to be faced with is hypercars I don't give a shit about. Uh-huh. I just don't care about them anymore. You give me another Senna or what have you. It's, it's a load of unobtainium that you can't drive on the road that's, that's all right on the track, but every time you're driving, you think a GT3 car would drive rings around this. Then I've got basically SUVs. Everything now is an SUV or a crossover. And then and there's some other stuff at the bottom. But there are very few ordinary cars now yeah. that, 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 that seem to get pushed to you. I mean, a Golf is still a great car. Every well, time I get out of a Golf. Um, but in some ways... I just think it's brilliant. In some ways, what you're talking about, isn't that essentially what Tesla's doing? I mean, to bring it back around. We just I mean, gave Road and Track Performance Car of the Year to a Hyundai Veloster N. Right. Which you have the i30 N. Which yeah. Is fucking great, great car. It really, is. really fun. It's a good car. I mean, I, I'd still, I'd still have the Golf. Well, it's but, right, but, but, but I, I, I think, 
how so how do you make the hatchback cool again that's what i think i i just think how, how could, everyone that's driving around in a crossover would be just as happy if not happier in a hatchback or a wagon and then we'd have 20 percent less emissions overnight and yeah. then we'd all feel less guilty about our lives yeah i i you know i don't know how to persuade americans to all step up but and it's not just you it's, it's europe need. as but well but i think it's, there's a division between car enthusiasts who always have said oh the wagon's better the hatchback's better etc cetera, etc cetera. you know the le- the lotus it's lighter it's better my parents so they loved SUVs. it. My, my, they weren't available. I agree. My, mine either until until the mid nineties. Um, but then you have normal people who have gotten attracted to this space and this you know no, quote, no, safety that, and everything no space. else. There's no extra space. They just sit higher. Yeah, that's actually. I just drove an Audi Q3, which was really embarrassing because it really. That's a really disappointing. It was car. a terrible car, and it felt like it. Re, I, I, you know, you look at it and you go, okay, well, that sort of looks like a Q5. All right, and you sit in it and you go, well, some of these. It had a suede dash, and you know, it sort of feels Audi-ish. And then you press the start button and listen to it, and then put the, and you go, oh, MQB. Yeah. You turn the wheel, and you go. This is a Golf. This is mm-hmm. absolutely a fifty-five thousand dollar Golf. For yeah, 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 and I was like, "Oh God, let's not have this." So, talk me through what you've been doing. You've been doing some. You've done some road and track car of the year stuff. Road, uh, yeah, I got. I've been doing some road and track. I made the masthead finally, which I'm happy about. Did you? Yeah, nice. I like working there. Nice. So not, I like it's, having it's that a, business it's a, card. It's a beautiful magazine. And I'll we've got a you. really the kick-ass staff right now is really good. And then Zach and Zach's been driving fan cars, and I've been driving my choice of press cars. Really, talk me through the Countach. Is, is that now as you want it? Can, yeah, it always has been. We talk about it a lot on this show. Okay, I don't. Sorry. I don't. I'll tell you. Can I'll we, talk can, about more about it off the show because I don't want to bore everybody. Can you? But can you are you going to take the wing here's off? Here's the it stats. Or not? You're going to no, take the wing off. No, no, no. no it stays. Mm, here's okay. the stats. Okay. I have driven it six thousand kilometers in twelve months. Good lad. I have spent zero dollars maintaining it, and I have booked two so, static photo shoot days, which have probably covered knock wood. The next three and a half to four years of maintenance. So I'll give you my story about my <laughs> my twelve cylinder Italian car. So I've had you're a, a, a five twelve. I've had a couple of five twelves, and I had a nice one which I sold at the wrong time, and I bought I bought this one. Mine had done, I think, forty eight thousand miles, done sixty something thousand now. Uh-huh. So it's probably one of the hardest mileage ones yeah. out there, and it's a great car. It drives really well. But I worked out the other day. I, I added up the invoices. I bought the car in twenty thirteen. Uh-huh. And I, I've now spent more maintaining it than I than did. You did buying, buying it. it. No, oh, no. It's reached that. It's reached, and they they just take a load of looking after. In so, twenty thousand miles. Yeah. Do you drive it not enough? Yeah. What last breaks? year, last year I didn't. No, it, it doesn't break. Um, it just requires a load of maintenance, and every other year you probably do need to have the engine out and do the bells. Oh, really? Well, oh, I mean, you, you don't need to do that. In a well, that's because you've got a proper engine. I mean, the, yeah. the flat twelve is one of the great engines, but but Enzo was a genius although he'd, no, he'd gone by then hadn't he so so it was in fact, the 512 TR has the dubious title of being one of the first Montezemolo cars which is probably a good thing because well, apparently when he arrived he saw the four, four the, he saw that he drove he, the story he goes he borrowed, he borrowed a 348 to go to the airport and came back and went right <laughs> we need to have a good look <laughs> at this place right. um, and the 512 conversion was and there's a lovely there's a lovely engineer his name escapes me uh, not Chio, was it not Chiochi I've forgotten his name I apologise to the guy but he he um he showed me all the work he did making the Testarossa into the 512, but they just had an eye on letting the dealers make money. Why would you have belt driven? I have no idea. Anything on a car? Yeah. If, if, I mean, the only reason you'd do it is to make sure they went wrong, <laughs> so the dealer can charge you a load of money. That's it, because they should be changed. Yeah. And I, I it's, and I, but I think what you can do it in the same way that you can assume that if you buy an old car and put it on new tires. You'll 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 profoundly tra- change the performance of the car. Yeah, yeah. I think the new belts are much better quality than they had back then. So I think a belt could probably last four years now. Oh, yeah, but who cool. wants to take? I don't want to take a chance. Yeah, you don't want to roll the dice. No. So, so yeah, I bought I bought my car fresh out of a full engine out service with a valve adjustment and a clutch and a flywheel and a water pump. Um, so the guy I bought it from paid a monster bill yeah. for it. And then I decided, and, and he owned the car for 10 years. For those who are heard, hearing this again, I apologize. I'll move on soon. We Sorry, the, but I'm allowed to hear it. I haven't spoken to him for a while. He owned the car for 10 years. He drove it 1,000 miles in okay. 10 years. And he spent probably 50 grand on maintenance. And But he drove it. He didn't I drive it. I feel his pain. But he didn't fucking drive it, okay? Yeah. Um, and 
I decided that I was going to drive it because I couldn't possibly do worse than not driving. No, it. and they like anything. They're just it's worked better out. When, oh, they're much better when they're driven. They're much happier Dude. because they go through proper heat cycles you, and all the rubber stay good. You can tell in his car if he lets it sit more than what ten days. It has a, it's a very distinct personality. Yeah. Yeah. It knows if I've driven it two days in a row, or if it's been five or six days, or if it's been ten days, or if it's been two weeks. It, and, it and acts it distinctly differently. Mine caught fire once. I mean, I've had some quite, <laughs> but I but I wouldn't. I, I was thinking about selling it recently, and my um, interestingly, my daughter, who doesn't, you know, she just she just, she doesn't care too much about cars, but she just said, please don't sell that. We mm-hmm. love that thing. It's ridiculous. Why does she um, love do you, it so much? I, th- I think because we've had so many good times. We've had lots of fun in it, and it and you know and we, and it's it's caused enough consternation to be funny for her. So I when I, I came back with it on fire <laughs> once because the lo- there was a, it had a it had a weird exhaust <clears throat> box on it that was it, it, it was like this bit, one. Do you have aftermarket? Um, it's got an aftermarket one, but it's got a thing called a pre-cat on it, which I have no idea what that means. It appears to be a sort of early emissions device that does yeah. nothing. But the, the inside of it was was a sort of paper. It was a kind of paper, but it had broken down, and then it just got hot one day, and it just caught fire. So I was driving along. So it was fire it, coming out of the exhaust tips? But all four exhausts just had fire. Just smoking just, like crazy. Just fire coming out of them. That's crazy. So when I pulled up, the thing was on fire. It was a full fire extinguisher job to oh, get it. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, or anything old and Italian, if you don't have a fire extinguisher. I have two in my car. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. I so so, so let's voice. move it on. But I'll, so, because obviously your, your regular viewers have heard too the much. The 512CR or Testarossas are a little more usable and they're probably screwed together a little tighter. But the sense of occasion with driving a Countach oh, is absolutely extraordinary. Anywhere you go with it, you win. Yeah, no, you are the winner. They are, they're gorgeous, and um, I, I've only driven a few, and the, the four valve makes all the difference. I've driven. Oh, yeah. it's a, mine's yeah. a four hundred and forty horsepower. It, it fucking goes, and it had a real four hundred and forty horsepower. Whereas, oh, of course, yeah. the, the Testarossa had three hundred and ninety at sea level <laughs> and on a freezing <laughs> night. You know, they admitted that. Yeah, uh, but um, luckily. We're on. We're now coming on the on the other side of the curve with the values of these cars because everything got out of control for mm-hmm. too long. And I'm I'm getting I'm starting to get itchy about something else. Really? Now. Like, do you want to do I you want to blow up your own spot by talking about? I it here? would like to. I I've always wanted a four five six modificato, a GT with the manual <laughs> gearbox. Really? Yeah, because I. Yeah. It, it is the most troublesome Ferrari of them all. It's at that point where technology. Technology wasn't quite advanced enough to deal with the processing powers necessary. So you, there's, everything's got a control box. If you yeah. look under the floor, there's a box about yay big for the cigarette lighter. There's one for the electric windows. We all know that the regulators for the window oh, droppers, yeah, they fail the whole terrible. time. But I think it is one of the most gorgeous Ferrari shapes. And I, it's a genuine four-seater. Yeah. And like, like everyone, you, you cast your mind back to what you did with the car. I remember having a press car in 2000 and I drove it all the way to the south of France with two friends to go to a wedding. And uh, I was allowed to do 500 miles in it. That you know, the UK to South France and back isn't 500 yeah. miles. Nope. <laughs> it's more like 1400. So I knew I was in trouble from Ferrari, and and I was so skint. I was a I was the ashtray on Autocar magazine. I had no money at all, and I had a my bank card bounced. So we're we're three up in this Ferrari. We're near Lyon at a fuel station. You've and no I, money. I filled it up, and and I couldn't pay for the fuel. We just, none of us had any money, oh, and no. they assumed it was stolen. So they called the gendarme. We had to stand there, and, and then we had to give. I think one of us gave them the passport, and then we and we said we'll come back in three days and we'll get our passport back. And the dude said fine. That's and we let wow. Us go. Holy so we shit. had, but but it, it was a great Grand Tour. And Ferrari have a habit of doing this. They're underestimated. Their ability to make a GT that over about a hundred miles an hour settles into that lovely loping speed. And yeah. The other one that really appeals at the moment is a six twelve. I had oh, one I years ago. I tweet about a six twelve. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. A mate of mine just bought one, <clears> and and I the manual one is a stunning car. Yeah. A manual six twelve. It's a, a really it really depends one. on the color. A good a good color what, and it's see, great. It's and the bad it's, color it has is to really be a dark bad. color for six twelve. Yeah. A, a silver yeah. one, just oh, yeah. The yeah. silver's all wrong. I've, look at, the, look thought, at the one on the bottom right. That's like a fifty eight. Oh, that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> I've but look at the dark the, ones. Look at that. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah, look at look okay. at the go bottom right. The Grigio Zach. titanium is excellent. No black. Black, black. There you go. pure black. Come black on, Dave, I think it's a great looking it car. Is. I it's think from the bad. front, it's the weird right looking. Well, look at that, I think the look at that one strange. on the right. Yeah. That's Grigio Ingrid, yeah. there, isn't it? Grigio yeah. Ingrid. We call that That's Jewish ter- racing gold. Jewish racing gold. Yeah. You, you can say that. Yeah. I can't. These, he- but, um, uh, these headlights it, are all to me. It, to me, it's just got a hint of morning piss on it. In Mo- you know? <laughs> in Mola made a body kit for that car that was amazing. You know what's kind of fucked up, Chris? I am, and you're you're gonna fucking laugh at me. Speaking of the four seater Ferraris. 
sort of casually looking at 89 Mondials. Oh, just a fucking But someone cruiser. your size is not a four-seater boss. I, I'd hate to break it to you. Why not? You don't think I can fit? But you, someone behind oh, no, you wouldn't no, fit. I don't care if it's yeah. someone behind me. I think I can fit. Do you like, so do you like the, I mean, the Mondial story is amazing, isn't it? So they facelifted it and made the engine transverse. I know. That's I mean, that, why I like that's a facelift. <laughs> I know. They changed the direction of the fucking motor. I didn't, I actually didn't believe that. Like, I was like, when they first told me that, I was like, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. So you're telling me it pretty much looks the same. They just painted some shit red, changed the wheels, and changed the direction the fucking engine goes? That's, I just love that. Oh, the so Italians crazy. would do that. So I, I like the later car. That's the later car. That's the 89. Mm-hmm. That's and I what do I like, because yeah. for me, that is the weird science car. Yeah, yeah. yes. Oh, also, no, hold on. Was the weird science a, car... Com- check me. There was, the weird, was the weird science car pre-facelift? It might have been. I think it was. It was. Because I think it was I got it wrong. Weird science, like, 83, 84. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. No, post-facelift would be um, Vacation. No, Vacation the 308, European Vacation? One be. of the vac- Vegas Vacation, I think, in the 90s has the Mondial. I don't remember. This is a weird science. Is that and, the weird uh, science Scent of a Woman is the Mondial as well, the Al Pacino it is, driving yeah. blind. Driving yeah. blind, yeah. But that, it's, not, it's basically a 348 with a longer wheelbase and power steering, which is appealing to me. Do you know what? They are, they're lovely cars, and I know a friend of mine, who I won't, whose name I won't mention, his father had both, and rated the early car the pre-facelift car with better? the longitudinal engine as being a better car. Hmm. Um, but but I think they're great. I mean, the convertible doesn't quite make sense because the convertible, when you see someone driving it, just looks like they've they've comically wound their seat as far forward as possible. I know. It just looks a bit... They look, they look great when they're stationary, but the moment someone's driving it, they when look you odd. you it, it looks kind of weird, I know. I know. I probably won't fucking go that way. Oh, I think I just, but they're such cool cars. I know. And, and also, these cars should always be about $30,000. That's what right. they deserve to be. Yeah. And at that money, you can buy it. And all... This sounds blasé, but you can only ever lose $30,000. But when someone... when in the You know, two years ago, people were asking 80,000, 90,000 pounds in the UK for Bro, a Mondial. Only oh. losing 30,000. Do you know that in from 2016 to 2018, I spent $22,000 leasing a Ford Focus RS? Money that is gone? Like, yeah, we discussed that. That makes time. you yeah. feel fucking. That, I mean. And that's before the, the chiropractor bills. Of, yeah, the idea of buying a Ferrari and driving. And I drove the car 11,000 miles. The, I could buy a Ferrari and drive it 11,000 miles, and there's no fucking way I'm losing 22 grand on that car. Yeah. Zero chance. But also, so there's a joy involved in it that's not there in the in the bloody yeah. focus. I like your uh, I like your fake M5 wagon. That's cool. Yeah, that's a bit. I'm not sure if it's going to be a labor of love. It's working quite well at the moment. So, it, so some guy had a 525 shell, a very late one, a 90 and he butchered uh, an early 3.6 M5, put it all in there. It's got the right diff, right gearbox. It's got the correct brakes. And it's does a all lo- the stuff work? It's a lovely beater. Everything works. And it has no air con, so the engine really does spin. Uh-huh. But it, but it, but in on a hot day, it is wind the windows down job. Look, I, I basically had a moment where I woke up. I had a lovely, I'm, I'm a lucky boy, you know, I've got some nice cars now. And I had an E63S estate, which is the single best vehicle I've ever owned. Yeah. It's a weapon. It's 620 uh, horsepower monster. Did you drive monster. the new RS6 Avant yet? I haven't driven that yet. I just drove it. Okay, we'll discuss it's, that in a minute. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And so, so the, but I, I thought the Mercedes was exceptional in the way that it, it felt like a genuine rear drive chassis with a bit of front assistance. It had enough space. It had a lovely brown interior. They did one with clear windows for me. It was dark blue. But it was £110,000 <laughs> yeah. for my daily car. Yeah. And, I, and I, okay, I could afford it. But I just had this moment where I just thought, this is ridiculous. The world's got out of control. For the, for the, for the, for the role this plays in my life, it's too much money. Yeah. And then I looked around one night, as you do, you have a few beers, a whiskey comes out, ah. it's two in the morning, and before you know it, you're on Car and Classic or eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw this thing. This was just lurking on on eBay. And a guy called um, uh, Neil, who, who from Rally Prep actually, who who looks after my rally car and looks after my E twenty eight and five as well. I I phoned him the next morning and said, "Can you go and have a look at this thing? And if it's worth it, we'll buy it." Because I worked out that it cost the same as the leather. I had a Dazzino brown leather interior and ceramic <laughs> brakes on my E C three S. And this car is less money, an wow. entire vehicle than yeah, the brakes yeah. and the seats. Yeah. And when you start looking at it like that. You realise that yeah. you, I'd taken myself to an absurd place, yeah, and I I didn't feel comfortable with it, and I haven't looked back. I really haven't. This I'll run this thing for two or three years, and then it, it might sell fall it apart. For, or you sell it for exactly what you well, pay for. Well, no, it. I keep the engine and put it in something else. But it is entirely <laughs> usable, yeah, and, yeah. and it has got cats on it as well, so it's pretty clean. But I, yeah, I, I'm going through a, a, I'm going through a cheaper phase of my life where I'm getting a lot more joy 
out yeah. of older cars. And I, th- I think a lot of people are the same. I don't have- Bro, that Delica, my van? Yeah. My van, someone, I was driving that McLaren 720 the other day, and someone, you know, you want a new water van? Yeah, you, grab, right. you grab a crystal water? Yes. Um, uh, and get me another one too. Um, I'm driving the uh, 720, and a friend, and the guy DMs me, and he goes, yeah, be careful on the track with that 720. My buddy has a windshield that cracked the 720 on the track. It hit a pebble at high speed, cracked the windshield. He said it was $14,000 to replace the windshield. That's what I paid for that whole van. A mint condition time capsule. Can we just van. confirm that something out there that a wi- that a windscreen, obviously in in the Queen's English, yeah. is fourteen thousand dollars? Why? What's it made I, of? I probably unicorn foreskin or something what? very thin. I don't know. Is it a shape thing? Is it because it's, there's so it's few? Curved, it's a shape. Yeah, like the Koenigsegg, you know, windshield is super. Can we rare. can we agree by the way that the super supercar argument in that category is over? That's the only. The seven twenty is the game it over. Is the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so crazy. If, if you need a faster car than that. Then, then go and go and sign up for NASA or, a guy, or something else. There was I went took it to an, an open track day, and and there was a guy there, and and uh, he has a 720 coupe, and he he and it's his like track car, and he's got sticky tires for it. He Whoa. took off the ceramic brakes, and he put like the super race Ray Bestos race pads on it, and whatever the GT3 kit, whatever it is, and uh, he uh, and he he comes up to me, and he goes in 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 one sentence, and I, and I like this guy, he's a really nice guy. He goes, dude, you got to try the 720 with a tune. It's an extra 110 horsepower. It's crazy. And then he goes, what mode are you driving in? Like dynamic? And I go, no, no, f- you know, full off, dude. Everything off. It's way more fun. And he goes, oh, you're completely out of your mind. So in one in one thought, he was like, the 110 horsepower is what really makes it the difference. But don't turn traction control off. Which net net takes away 200 horsepower. Yeah, yeah I oh, I don't know. And I've got a, I've got a little 1M that I'm using a lot at the moment. That's done 60,000 miles. Those and, are fun. And it's a, it's a great little car. It's got a, a little bit of a tune on it, so it has about 400 horsepower. Um, it's got a nice exhaust. Again, it's the right size of car. It, every time I get in it, I feel good. It doesn't make a bad statement, I don't think. But those that know what it is know what it is. Those that don't, yeah. don't. I, I'm... That's the that's the side of our world that I'm really into at the moment. Yeah. I'm not looking at I'm not looking at new car reviews. I do watch other people's videos and I do read other people's do reviews. You? I do. I and read. I, I don't watch. And I and I I try to stay abreast of it all. But I just I've got another you know I've driven another supercar. I've got, I just couldn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And I realised that I'm becoming out of touch a bit. When the other day someone showed me a picture of a of a car. And I didn't know what it was. That's the first time that's happened to me in my adult life, I think. It was some kind of hypercar that Uh had a weird name. But I wasn't abreast of it because I just couldn't give a shit. Yeah, I completely understand. I think... I think used M3s, F, you know, F, F80 M3s, um, C63s, all all the used tackle from five years ago, I just love all that. That's where you my know enthusiasm what, actually, is. Yeah. Yeah. While you're in town, you know, it's, exa- it's right up your alley. There was a story that came out a, a week ago. There's 5,000 C7 Corvettes sitting on dealer lots right now, unsold. 5,000. Everyone, they're just sitting there because everyone's seen talk the new me through one. This, talk me through the Corvette then. This is the last front end. Yeah, but Corvette. surely they're, once people see the new, the mid-engine one in the flesh, they'll go and buy the old one, won't they? They'll go. Because <laughs> I, 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 just, I just think it looks... Do you know what? It, it looks you know what, from Nate? the front angles. You've done it back. for me. There's a bit of Mondial awkwardness about it, isn't there? <laughs> there is there a, go. a, it's, got a it's got a bustle. There's a, there's a whiff. <laughs> it's got some there's a whiff of Mondial awkwardness about it, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, no. The Corvette is uh, it's very much a Pantera. You remember the Di Tommaso Pantera? Yeah, that's that, that, pretty much what the C8 Corvette is occupying that prettier. territory. That's a bit like saying that your your teacher's a bit like the Boston no, Strangler, the, isn't no, it? No, see, look, the Corvette race car is way better, and I'll tell you why. It doesn't have the trunk. The having to have that trunk behind the engine—that's a boot, Chris. Yeah. Behind the engine that fits a golf club drives the styling of the entire back of the car. It doesn't look quite right to me. Yeah, no. it's because they took a. Camaro ass and put it on a mid-engine car. Most mid-engine cars have vents and shit back there. Well, it's, just too, it's too tall. But it's people just, buy know. cars because of the way they look. Let's yes. face it. So do you think they're going to struggle to sell these or the sticker price is no, no. so competitive? No, it's, it's pretty competitive and I think most people are not as critical of the styling as we are. People buy cars because of how other people think that they look. 
Do you think? <laughs> that, that too. Okay. There's a certain percent. Well, okay, you got to remember, we are talking from L.A. That's all anybody cares about. And it does it does drive pretty good. It's a real mid-engine car. I've realized what Zach's doing here. You'd be very sure about your search history doing this thing, haven't you? Because yeah, you we, could get yourself in a right pickle, <laughs> couldn't you, Zach? I have my own computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you'll, you'll, it's, pre- it's pretty good. They'll, they need to work out a couple of little things, but it's, it's but pretty good. But for the money, because it's, 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 it's less than the cheapest Cayman, isn't it? It uh, the base is the About same even, as the cheapest came in. The one I drove was ninety thousand. And how much power has that got? Five hundred wow. or four ninety five or whatever. You can't argue but, with that. No, you can't. But what it does, what what it doesn't have is the revs. It's the lowest revving mid engine car on the market. So you, even though it has this lovely even power band, it's eight paddle shifted gears so you're not zinging it out and, and it, you you feel like every gear you need 2,000 more revs you know what I mean so well, how far behind the McLaren was it at Peacody it was only a few seconds I think I think maybe two seconds and this is like the heavy the base it, it was exactly as, uh, the 600 LT it was okay. exactly as fast within a couple tenths either direction I forget as the 911 at Carrera S on track which is great. Which is great. And how much was the Carrera? One hundred and sixty thousand. One hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. Expensive. Good. The Carrera was. I mean, the Carrera S is great. Yeah, so you had a. You had a. Did you get one back from the from Germany or something? I saw on your social yeah, media. Yeah, I did this thing where I like shepherded one on an air an air cargo flight because so Porsche North America has to buy their press cars from Porsche Germany. Well, they do that in yeah. the UK now. Yeah, they're yeah. Diff- they're separate cost bases, yeah, so they have yeah. to account for them. So some a very a very enterprising PR person said, well, instead of just shipping in these cars let's like make a, tr- a, a thing out of it for a couple of media guys and I got to do 1200 miles in the car which was what do I you mean, think it great. it's the best car on the market oh for that, my isn't god it? it's so great it's so like just easy and comfortable and is it special enough and, for you you know I fucked myself I drove a GT3 RS the week before I did it and I drove <laughs> it and I go this is this is probably the best car well-rounded sports car in the world buy all the four liters immediately <laughs> yeah. for me it's GT3 touring with yeah. the, the, like just like the one you smashed up, Chris. Yeah, mine. That <laughs> luckily, that luckily has gone because yeah. they, they were trying to get that back on the road. Were they trying to fucking fix? They tried it? to Ooh. fix it, and I had to try really hard to persuade them to not fix it. And I've got some news on that front coming soon. Anyway, so I've got, I have got another one now. Oh, uh, do you? Yeah, but I'm not going to show any pictures of it yet. Okay. But I, I have got another one. Um, I'd like, I would like to have one of those. It, I, it's the best car all round sports car yeah. that are in, of my testing generation. It's the only car I really want. Yeah. Um, I'd love a singer, but they're just so much money that I couldn't afford to run my You might know to. somebody. I could, yeah, I could probably find my way <laughs> yeah. in there. Yo, give me, how about that, the, the fucking DLS thing, though? Because you're the only person I've known that's actually had a go in that thing. Yeah, well, we've done, which is the Singer Dynamic of, Lightweight Study. Dynamic Lightweight Study. So I've done some development on that. That's a uh, extraordinary. Yeah, I'm sure you're kit. totally objective about this fucking thing. Well, right? I can be. I lo- look, let's face it. There's, there's only going to be what 67 made. So uh, I don't think it really matters what I say about yeah. it. Th- those people that want it want it. It's a. Uh, <laughs> how I'm sorry. How, about this cough what I was the development process like for you? I mean, was that like a. Well, it's not a bucket list because it didn't exist when you started what, this game. What I, what I love about it, um, and it's it's kind of grandfathered in what I do. I was doing the singer before I um, was involved with Top Gear, so um, you oh know, boy I Zach, what kind of fucking disastrous what website you have you doing? found? Whatever, oh, oh, you have found us in God. a fucking she's, mire. She's cleaning a grandma. <laughs> she was scrubbing a grandma. <laughs> Zach has gotten us into the weeds. I'm gonna go to topgear.com. <laughs> there we go. Go, on, go on to my go on to my Instagram, and there's a video of it skidding about or something. Go go down to the videos um, from last summer. Oh, oh I'm you, not finding. So, it doesn't work like so, that. Um, <laughs> it's it's a. We, what I love about it is I've been part of the process from the first conversation that that involved a beer mat and a and a couple of beers. You know, you sit there with with Maz and Rob. And we we you know you decide what you want this car to be. That's the fascination of the process, and um, it it is just the ultimate expression of a normally aspirated 911. Because I think we're not going to be in that place in ten years' time to be able to either make or sell a car like that. Um, and and once you've got Rob Dickinson uh, applying himself to that kind of project, yeah. then then the possibilities are limitless. I think so. We've ended up with 
you know, it's 500 horsepower, it's well south of 1,000 kilograms. You know, you do the math. You ma- imagine a GT3 Touring that weighed 400 kilograms less. I mean, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, you're just, you're, you're just hanging on for the, for the ride. Is but, it, it's got to be, is it manageable though? I mean, it's, it is it's linear, because, right? It is it's not because it's turbo. Got, it's because it's got, it's got not got too much torque. It's a Isn't bit, it kind of crazy how even the most gnarly, naturally aspirated engine now seems so manageable compared but, to like a psycho death McLaren oh and it, do you know what we'll come back to the DLS in a minute but it it's it brought home to me by my touring because actually that doesn't need traction control because the torque is so nicely managed yeah. for the available traction from the vehicle right this turbo era we've got is so out of control you know you, the first time you get in a C63 on a cold day <laughs> you come in yeah. C63S you just think what the fuck were they thinking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I think that more than 90% of current performance cars are undrivable without the systems. Yeah. That, and, and I, I'm not... The 720 I'm, is a real handful yeah. if you try and turn no, stuff I'm not off. the best driver in the fun. world, but I can, there. I, I can drive okay, but I don't turn shit off anymore. I don't... I used to get in cars and go, off. You know, E46 M3s, <laughs> off, I'm off, look at me. Um, in fact, Steve Sutcliffe, I used to work with, used to call it the reverse Winston, because you get your two fingers and just do that. You go sport, <laughs> sport and DSC, called the reverse Winston. So you go, the Sutton. Mercedes, you have to hit like seven buttons you in a do, row to yeah. do that shit. Play yeah. Scrabble. But, yeah. but the... But the reality is, these vehicles. On I'm if it, if the road if I know the road could be damp up there up ahead. If I'm on the gas, I don't want to be. I've got kids in the car. Yeah. I don't want to be fucking firing in opposite locks. So I just leave them on. And you can I can tell this because the rear brake pads on my <laughs> on my one M <laughs> have gone because yeah. I put it in M whatever mode. And yeah. I, the other day I got a brake pad warning, so I confidently got out to look at the front and I thought, oh fuck, I've become one of those billies that. <laughs> uses the DSC so much that it wears out the rears and it's happened <laughs> but so the DLS and I, it's not a sales pitch because the people that are buying already it already fucking good. sold aren't it, they? It, it is it is it, it's up there what we wanted to do was to make a vehicle that will sit there with a McLaren F1 or a LaFerrari as being a datum point in the internal combustion engine sports car and I think I think we have it's fucking outrageous and <laughs> it's a million and a half dollars or something yeah, give or I'll take. add the rest yeah, yeah I think by the Maybe time more. by the time you yeah. spec it is more than that you can I saw one. I saw the one they had at um, Eli's place in Arizona and it's fucking crazy um, it's the inside of Rob's head imagined <laughs> yeah. as a car and, and, and he is second to none when it comes to, to doing this stuff so but here's mm-hmm. the question I still I've asked them many many times and I've not they won't let me have a go in a singer of any kind right I'm going to sort that out for you kind right? of, I'll sort that out be, which would be very helpful we will sort that out for you okay that would be that. nice I'd, I'd really On like to because I, th- I think it's kind of car that you'll really appreciate I think I would um, and I'd like I'd, I just want to make a little video that's it okay. but um the uh, I've driven a lot of these kind of wannabe singers yeah and What's the best one you've driven? Have you driven the Gunther? The yet? Gunther works. Yeah, I've not yeah. driven that. Everyone says it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's if you wanted to, you know, quote singerize uh, a 993, um, that's that's, that's pretty much where you end up. The the coolest thing about the Gunther works is the front end and the fact that they've really done this geometry in the wide and front end, so it has the craziest turn in of almost you know anything I can imagine. I mean, it, it runs massive front tires, but but the geometry's not fucked, which I think they've done a really nice job with. Yeah, when you when you go through the process of 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 totally re-engineering an old car, which yeah. is what the DLS is, you just realise how much of it was wrong, <laughs> and how much of it and how much of it's problematic. I mean, yeah. the process of the, there's going to be a film about the DLS. You know, yeah. we, we've we've catalogued the whole thing um, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing that with people in, in due course that'll be cool um, is and, JF and, doing that shit uh, no I've done it oh. so Neil has done the oh, whole thing oh cool nice so, so it, it's, it's it's a lovely story but part of it was going back and speaking to Porsche engineers and saying wh- how what would you do yeah and they just look quizzically at you and well because you got Metzger involved right yeah we've and got we've got we've got people that have you know from from when the from when the long bonnet car was was new those engineers are still just about alive and you sit there and they just they talk about the rear suspension design they slightly sheepishly go yeah that training arm is a bit ropey <laughs> but, you know that when you look at the potential camber and toe changes yeah, when, yeah. It, when it's under load it's terrifying when you look at the aerodynamics of the car i mean it's a fucking shambles and and you look at some of their solutions and they go on about how good the ducktail is i mean it it doesn't really work. <laughs> the the ducktail was there to stop, to basically stop it taking off. Um, so I, I, I think the reimagining genre. I, some people are becoming a bit tired of it. There's too much going on, but I like it. I have to say, I, I quite Do like it. Do you think? Have you ever? Have you driven any of the kind of wannabe? 
cars that are you know maybe high quality but not to the level yeah, of I mean, obviously, obviously, where, I, where, maybe like a two a, a hundred and fifty to two hundred well, thousand mate, resto mod my mate, my mate Richard Tuttle has been doing them for ages yeah, yeah. you know and dynamically you can get quite close to a singer yeah. for a lot less money you just can't have the bits that people right, love right, which right. is the beauty the of finishing it. touches we, we, we did a car many many years ago Richard and I we built a green um, it was based on an, on an 88 Carrera but it was backdated and then we put a nice engine in it Actually, no it wasn't no the shell was old so the shell was sorry 70, 72 73 and we put a three and a half litre engine in it we we bodged it to fit with a, a g50 gearbox it cost a load of money it was and we did it before rob had done his singer and he admits that he saw that car and thought yeah. that's quite interesting and but he'd, he already had his own idea he'd made his own hot rod by then and what what staggered me was we could get the car to a really high standard of performance. So we could get, you know, a power to weight ratio that was as good as a modern 911, if mm -hmm. not better. But the moment we tried to make a nice interior, the cost, yeah. the cost of doing it. <laughs> and I still don't know how Singer does it. Well, to, when to I produce... showed my father the Singers at uh, the Quail a couple of years ago and I brought him, my father's been in the leather goods and fashion business forever. My dad looked inside, he goes, uh, Matt? Do you know there's like fifty thousand dollars of leather in this interior? Like before you even start stitching it, it like it's incredible. crazy, and the, so good. The, the the quality that that they produce, and also what I love is that Rob has this ability to update something in a way that pays perfect homage to what it was, but doesn't grate. So all the buttons, every single detail mm -hmm. is is exact is taking an old control or an old surface and just updating it, and they just look. They look wonderful. Yeah. And I, okay, I am a spokesman for the company. I'm not on a sales pitch here. I think that there's other backdated 911s are available. <laughs> no, no, I was uh, just, I just, and, the question is, and I you think know, the Gunther, I'm, I've not I driven the Gunther yet. The I'm not, yeah, oh, I've sorry. not driven the Gunther, and I think it looks fantastic. I've they not, want a lot of money for those too. I've not driven the roof. You know, the, uh, Lois has done oh, his turbo car. That's supposed to be fucking crazy. But that will be fantastic. And he, he's the godfather yeah, of this yeah. exercise, isn't he? I'm, and I, Look, I, this is the new Gunther with the bare carbon. They've done a good job here. Wow. It's a it's a very pretty car. But can I say one thing? We'll move this on slightly here. This is yeah. a separate subject. I vacillate hugely about which old 911 I think is the best looking. Mm. About 15 years ago, when I was struggling to make a living doing this ridiculous job that we do, <laughs> I would, I'd buy and sell cars. And I was a, as much a car trader as I was a journalist, because that's the only way I could make enough money. Uh -huh. So I'd buy, a, and Porsches is what I sold, and I uh, had reasonable trade um, connections. And so for me, the 993 was everything. It was my bread and butter car. Any condition 993, I could turn a penny on because people love them. The 993 was fetid as the last of the air cooled. Yeah. It was just the thing. And I thought it was the best looking old 911 of them all. And then about two, three years ago, I suddenly woke up almost overnight and I looked at a 964 and I thought, I just prefer the way they look. And now 993 shape grates a bit in places. The, front, is, the front looks a bit too long it's a it doesn't quite work whereas i think the 964 remember how the 964 was fucking the ugly kid for I know. like two decades yeah. but now <laughs> now it's got this sort of bulbous perfection yeah. about it yeah and i love i just love the shape of it what my, is that uh, my friend larry casilla who you know um has a, a beautiful 964 oh actually his nine larry's 964 was built by a guy named spencer cox who passed away yesterday all right oh, i, did, I didn't know this guy but yeah, it's, speed yes, sport sounds, tuning. Sounds. he was a beast he rate you know every big race race team owner tuner genius um r.i.p but back in the day larry was doing a side hustle selling cars for some guys and he was trying to sell a 92 964 carrera 2 red over tan uh, I think it was under thirty or forty thousand miles, and I remember distinctly he couldn't get twenty one grand. Twenty one grand was the number, and he couldn't get it for months. And I don't know, he sold it for nineteen or something. I mean, it was crazy. He couldn't get the money for this thing. But it's and weird, now, isn't it? That, that car's probably ninety thousand dollars. You know, sometimes you feel that you've reached the conclusion of your beliefs or opinions about a particular vehicle, mm -hmm. and you wake up one day. And suddenly the nines, I, you know, for me that's quite. Bro, a big I've been thing. shitting on Mondials for twenty years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah. yeah. You waste even one time. It's really strange yeah. the way things can change. Yeah. But, but and the other one, I, I, re, I, my first nine eleven was a thing called an eighty eight Club Sport. You got a oh, few yeah. over here, but in, the, in they made more of it in Europe. And at the time, it was very much seen as a poor man's seventy three RS. You know, it wasn't as special. It, there wasn't as much modification to it. But judged on the way a car drives, they were fantastic. They yeah. were so much better than a Carrera because the, they claimed a weight loss of about a hundred kilograms or sort of fifty kilograms. Nothing, basically a large lunch. Yeah. And um, 
but that was against a, a, a very meanly specced Carrera of the day. And of course, all Carreras actually came with air con, sunroof. So the, uh-huh. the, the weight difference is more like 150 kilograms. And I absolutely love that car. And there's one for sale at the moment. Oh, that's a 964 with the with the square mirrors. Yeah. So let me. Well, in, I'll, right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a secret now. Right. I've not told this publicly. So about two years ago, um, I was offered some uh, some cars for sale. There was a as a, a collection of what well, collection? There was a, a series of cars from the same owner. I think the poor guy deceased, um, and the estate was selling the cars, and I got offered a couple uh-huh. of them, and they were all oak green metallic Porsches which every is my, single one uh, of them there there was some special cars in there and I bought two of them I bought a 928 which I've still got uh-huh. which is 928 over a caramel interior manual S4 done wow. about 50,000 miles I've still got nice. that it's a really beautiful car yeah and there was a 964 right hand drive early car exactly that spec with those wheels and with the square mirrors because I, I hate the fact that everyone puts the teardrop uh-huh. RS mirrors on I think the square mirror is the look very early car it was a Carrera 2 in green right hand drive with a black leather interior it didn't have the sports seats it's the only thing that was wrong with it it was you could eat your dinner off it yeah. and it was being serviced for me uh-huh. and one of the mechanics went out in it to do a little test drive oh no and she never came back oh <sighs> Covered at least. It's covered. That's but, un- but it's an unrepeatable vehicle. That's you find me another right yeah, hand yeah, drive, yeah. fifty thousand mile. That the car doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. So I got the money for it, but I didn't want the yeah, money. No, you wanted the, I car, wanted the car. car. Yeah. So the fucking, you know, speaking of those, the flag mirrors, the square mirrors on when Lee Keen built my safari car, <laughs> I, I had driven his other one with the teardrop RS mirrors, and I hate them. Yeah. And I told Lee, I said, Lee. Let's build mine with the regular mirrors. They're expensive, I'm aren't they? Fucking daily drive it, and, yeah. gonna, and and he goes, no, no, this is what we do. And I go, well, why? And he goes, because when you're in the forest, you know the trees rally. I go, maybe mine could be like a desert rally car where there's no trees. <laughs> mine could be a Venice rally car. <laughs> <laughs> and and he goes, this is this is how we're gonna do it. And I was like, fuck. And to to date, I have you still I not got square mirrors. No, I have the teardrop mirrors, and I hate them. See, oh, I, I love my Safari car so much. It is the perfect air-cooled 911 for Los Angeles. Perfect. Couldn't be better. In, it's except, a great thing. Except if I could see out of the side mirrors, that would be really great. Oh, just like, so have you got those little, have you got the proper rally? The yeah. race mirrors. No, you yeah. just need some square ones. Well, he shaved the fucking doors. Yeah. It's a permanent change. You, you shave the you door. You drill a hole again, can't you? <laughs> I suppose I could. Easier to drill the hole than to fill it. Um, I'm sure we have a million questions, don't we? So many. Okay, listen. I want to... You can get, select through, I want to get to are. a lot of people's questions, but we have way too many, and we do not have that kind of time. So, can, is there a way to zoom in on this, or do I have to read it like that now? I can zoom in, but you you can't pop out Super Chat by itself anymore. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Thanks, YouTube. Oh, well, that's going to be a problem. You've got your YouTube. I've, oh, I've yeah. got one of those. Yeah. I'm quite proud of it. We're that. almost at the million one. Are you? Uh, yeah, close. For Smoky Tire? Yeah. Um, Zach, I'm going to defer to you. Pick the questions that most apply to Chris. And with everyone else, we'll just say thank you for supporting us. I'm sorry to say. Um, let me see. Hang on. Wait, go down. Uh, I'm all in. Uh, cup. Oh, Jesus. The... Uh, oh, okay, is that a... Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry to say. Okay, here we go. Eric wants to know, what is currently on top of your cars to buy before you kick the bucket list? Only oh. cars you have not owned yet are allowed. That's a good one. Um, I probably would like a 964 RS. I've never had one. Um, my good friend Dickie Meaden's got one. And I just I think it's a, a good all-round fun car that I want to own. Um, I want... <sighs> Actually, no, I've already had an F12, but I want another F12, so that's I've not owned one of those. Um, what Wait, else would I like? Oh, yeah, you had an F12. I did. Um, I, do you know what? An F40 is probably right up there for me. I've always wanted an F40. I, I'm you not guys sure have a real go in one, right? With that guy who liked to jack off watching you drive his cars? <laughs> Stay on. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what, he, what a that dude. That was a great what video. A, what, a great dude. video. <laughs> what a dude. He just said, go out and rinse the It was F40 and F50, same F40 day, right? And F50. So, I, th- I think an F40, a fit F40 on fresh tyres is something I'd like to own. I would... What am I really, really... There's one or two things. I'd love a Carrera GT. I still think that's the epicenter of that type of car the quality of it 
Oh, there's a lot. There's too many. Those uh, are high dollar cars. You're gonna have to condense upwards, I think. Well, I earn some more money. Do you have anything? That too. Do you have anything that's that's <laughs> cheap, kind of like that 911 that you lost, that is less expensive but kind of hard to find? You know, some kind of gem. At the, at the moment, the unobtainium for me, or the stuff I've I've not owned, is much lower value actually. So B A R S four. Avant, they really appeal because when it was new on drive, I shat on it because it because I thought it was a weak effort. It just it rode terribly. There was stuff about it that wasn't quite right, but I think it's easily fixable. Mm. So I'd like the idea of going back and revisiting some stuff that was a bit suboptimal and seeing and if we see could if just tweak yeah. it. See if we could just get it right. So all of that kind of stuff. F eighty M three. I've not I've not I've had a current C sixty three wagon, but I'd quite like the saloon. We don't get that. It's a yeah. fucking travesty. Yeah. We don't get that. That's we right. have to get the GLC sixty three, the fucking crossover. I had a. So I'll tell you about my C63 wagon quickly. I, I, this is nothing to do with your question. That's okay, Sorry, boss. This is, so, we're doing a show So here, my dude. C63 <laughs> cool. wagon was parked on the street for 10 days when I went away. And when I came back to it, I couldn't quite work out. Something, something wasn't quite right with the car. It just didn't feel right. Um, and it turns out that someone had tried to steal it in quite a comprehensive way. They got into the boot and they'd messed with the control unit and some stuff. They'd basically tried to play with it. But they stole a pair of my shoes <laughs> <laughs> from the boot. They stole a pair of my fucking shoes. They were like, well, we can't take the car, yeah. but these Nikes are something. sweet. They're getting home something. one way or another. Were they, you know? I mean, so, were they nice shoes? Were they the no, kind of shoes? A pair of very old Red Wings <laughs> that, that basically are horrible, but I couldn't believe it. So that, yeah, there's loads of stuff that I'd love to own. We've just talked about 612, but I've had one before. A 456 is right up there. A 456 is the catnip one for me because I know they're a disaster. I, I've got a good friend of mine that sells Have me Have you had a 550? No, but I, w- I had a five seven five. I had a manual five seven five. Wow, that's got to be nice. That was a it was a good car. Yeah, but but again, compared to what's out there now, it feels like a tank. I know that's like mm. my vanquish. But which, I know someone who refused to sell me a four five six. He had one. He said, "I will not sell you this car because it will be a disaster and it will come back to haunt me." <laughs> so there you go. There's a list of cars. On my my dad's buddy had the four fifty six automatic. Oh, that's some Mercedes. Some Mercedes automatic. Some Mercedes. Yeah, the tiny T. No, that's the four hundred. The four fifty six had a round knob. It's a brown that looked knob, like really? a shifter. And yeah, it comes back and it's a four speed Mercedes gearbox. <laughs> yeah, that's shit. So, so you've got about from the crank outputting probably four hundred and twenty horsepower. By the time it gets through that transmission, you've got about thirty two. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Uh, Carl says, "Is Aston's new DBX worth looking at? Did you oh, see the Aston just crossover? Fucking winding me up, isn't he? Look, <laughs> let me be absolutely clear. Aston Martin is a company needs to make that car." Aston Martin needs to, to the revenue from that car. Every modern sports car company has to make an SUV. It seems to make the numbers stack up on their sports car business. That in itself is a sad state of affairs, and it makes me pretty gutted. I don't want any of these cars. They're of no use to me. I don't know what they're for. But if I was gonna, if I was forced to buy a big SUV, I'd either have a Cayenne or I'd, I'd have that Aston Martin because they're the two least offensive looking ones of the lot. If you ask me, Fair the ca- the Macan like Macan S GTS it's, Turbo. It's a, they're actually pretty fun. But I prefer the last Macan to the current one, don't you? I think the last one is a better uh, looking car. I haven't gone out. You guys have it a little before us. I don't think we have the new Macan But you know yet. the new Macan is actually the old Q5 underneath. It's a bloody confidence trick, that is. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I went to the Macan factory. I was impressed. Uh, Daniel says, if you guys were in charge of the next generation M3, what would be your asks to make sure it stays relevant or be better than the competition? Well, I've just read something on one of the U.S. car magazine websites. uh, I don't know if it's Road and Track or it's Car and Drive or one of the big guys saying that they've just announced there will be a two-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive M3. Now, I I don't know how they... Do you think it'll be the same car with a disconnectable? It has to be. They wouldn't engineer two different cars. There's just Mm. not enough money in it, is there? So, I don't know. What, What I would say is that... BMW with the the, la- the current M5, whatever the code is on it, I get lost in F something, isn't it? The current M5 doesn't look different enough from a 5 Series sedan. So the great thing about E39 and even the one after it is that uh, the, which was E60 60. is that you could tell mm-hmm. from you could tell from camber yeah. from the exhaust box the flare from 100 yeah. yards a car guy or girl yeah. can tell Interior. that's an M5. The new one doesn't have that. Yeah, it doesn't it's very have that. invisible. And I think and I think the F80 I love the thing about the F80 M3 but the, with the way they cleverly move the wheel arch out on the panel so the door can stay the same so the body and white can stay the same is that 
it looks so butch on the road. It's just got that stance. And if they look, I, the visual of an M car is really important. It goes without saying that Dynamic's going to be great. There's, uh, car companies are so good at that shit now, it's going to be great. But I just want, I want the new M3 to look as cool as that. I very nearly bought the CS a couple of weeks ago. I, I'm Was obsessed that, with that car. Didn't they, someone put a spy shot out of the new M3 that had the buck teeth? On it was that a hoax or was that legit? See, I quite like the buck teeth. Fuck out of here! I do. Yeah. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. Bring the up buck teeth. Bring, bring up. Bring up. Bring up an E. Bring up an E twenty one three two three I now. I know where you're going with it, but I don't think it's fucking working here. You you can't add swear words to your argument. It doesn't yes, add anything. Can. Okay, just because you say <laughs> fucking doesn't mean you're right. Yes, right, so E twenty one three two three I from the front. Uh, I, that, I see the. That, I is, see the that is a BMW grill. That's a, so. Why can't you have that again? I don't think the new one looks good like that one does. Look at that car. I'd I like think one that of those. looks they, nice. I agree with you. to my list of cars I want Get to Get the own. new M3 spy shots. Give me a 2020 M3 spy shot because the it was right, highly so buck toothy. I think you need, think you need the now. quad headlights to make it the was, buck teeth work. It was highly, at least it might not have been. Look at that. Get that's, the fuck out of I'm here. I'm telling you that's what I saw. I, I don't know if that's real, but Chris, that's what Chris, I saw. Chris, to your point, look, the, the, the grill on this <laughs> car, your E21, are the same height and size as the headlights. Here, they've had to expand outward and they've taken over the neighbor's property of the air intake. <laughs> oh, it just looks like someone's photocopied their ass and put uh, it onto the front of the car. I don't together. know if it's real. That's the thing. But I, but I think rather than going ever wider, they could go a bit more vertical. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's why, because otherwise, they're going to have no headlights left. Someone, yes. Bob Lutz, said the M2's grill, because it was all black, he said it looks an awful lot like a Kia. It's cold <laughs> as ice. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Lutz is a cold motherfucker, though. Uh, what, what was the one under it? Oh, the next question we had was, what, uh, it's talking about air-cooled Porsches, does the G50 transmission in a 1989 Porsche 930 Turbo fix the, quote, issue of it not being that good of a driver? I want a 930 Turbo, but I want a nice drive kind of canyon car. So basically, the 930 Turbo had a four-speed until 1989. Yeah, so the 915, the 915 box, the predecessor of the G50, is a, has a bad rep, <laughs> but there's a lot you can do with it. You could buy a Wevo kit, Wevo shift, and you can you can make the shift more positive. But I quite like the old four-speed gearbox because I think the torque spread of the engine does suit having fewer gears, and the G the the 915, the key to it is not to hurry it. You can drive a G50 in a more modern way because it's, but the synchro is better and it's, it's, it's got a nice, it's basically got a sprung gate, hasn't it? One, three, five, or sprung more like a modern car, whereas uh -huh. the 915 hasn't. I'd say buy a 915 boss and then just, just slow the shift down. One thing that Tuttle does, which is quite clever, is he makes the lever longer. If you make the lever longer, you've got this great big wand that you just move around oh, the dashboard yeah. and you slow yeah. your shifts down and you you drive the car better. Interesting. When I when I when I went to see you in England and I had those edibles <laughs> and you took me to see your friend Richard Oh, and I didn't really Jesus. know who he was. Well, I'd I'd just, let, I'd, we went to Codemasters, and we were in a white CLS 63 yeah, shooting break, yes. and you were off your box. Yes, because I had eaten some edibles that took way too long to kick they in. They basically kicked in as you landed. <laughs> I kicked in as I was getting my bag you were from the back. I came back <laughs> from this meeting, and Farrow's like this, and the front seat going... <laughs> I was pretty high, but then he took me and takes me to Richard's place, and I, I'd never actually heard of him, and there was a lot of cool Porsches around, and Richard was very friendly and unassuming, and he goes... Just put a new gearbox in this one. You want to come test it out? And Chris is like, you should go. And I went. And he, I didn't know he had a rally stage, <laughs> which, he had, <laughs> which he had. And he didn't inform me that he was going to turn off the road onto the rally stage. So when he handbraked off the fucking public road and then went into bonsai rally driver, you know, fucking flat foot, left foot braking. It's quite it was, handy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and it was a crash box in the car, so he was shifting it without the clutch. And he was hammering this thing. It had maybe 100 horsepower, and he was tearing it up. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh this guy. This guy knows some things. No, they, he, he makes a good guy. He knows what he's he doing. He does. So, so, do you know what? The, so the 915 box is much maligned, but I think it actually is quite a nice thing. If you just Wevo it, have a rebuild I'd have a 930 with a four speeder because that means you can have an older one like a, a 75 to 77 930 turbo for me is a wonderful that's machine. what Magnus yeah. is all about those I like the later 80s cars I like five speed but that's mm. just me because I'm kind of whatever mm. what's the next uh, question Nate says for those of us mere mortals who will never have the chance to drive a Ferrari 250 LM is there anything closer to earth that can replicate that type of experience have you driven a 250 LM yeah I raced one oh you raced one didn't um, you but uh uh not really, no, because of the combination of that of that engine 
you know, twelve cylinders behind you, and it's and it's a it's just a small displacement V twelve, so you have to really rev the shit out of it. Uh, it's a it's a gorgeous oh, yeah. look at that gorgeous bit and a, a fantastic chassis. Wow. So I'm did not that sure. Car, did the two fifty LM ever actually race yeah, at Le Mans? Yeah, one Le Mans. It did in six. Was it sixty four? Something no before it would be after that because sixty four they still had a GTO oh, going. Oh, sixty five. Yeah, probably when, when four when the Fords took a poo. Well, it's it's got it's got to be before sixty six because you wouldn't yeah. get into to did you Goodwood. see Le Mans sixty six? No, or Ford I, I've Ferrari? not. What do you think? I thought, uh, despite is some of its historical accuracies, it's an incredibly entertaining movie. Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't know about you, the moment there's a car film, I don't watch it because it. Just, I no, know, it's pretty good. I know I'm going to sit there pulling my teeth out at all the inaccuracies, but you think it's okay? Yeah, it's okay if you can get. Doesn't he downshift on the on the Mulsanne Straight at one that's point? That's what I mean. There's a yeah. couple little things like that. It, there's a cup. There's like a couple. But couple you know what? Go back and watch the, the, the Steve McQueen Le Mans film. I'm going to be a, a heretic here. It's pretty shit. It's I don't bad. like it. I think it it's garbage. Bad. I've she said it's shit bad. the whole time. Every, yeah, every movie's um, going to have that. It's not a documentary. It's a movie. It's it's, it's, it's entertainment. It's yeah. entertainment. And the fact that they even use that story for mainstream and it's as popular as it is. I mean, as a car guy, it, like you said, it was pretty close. And it's pretty close. The closest to the thing. So I had a good time location spotting watching yeah. it. Did you? They used a lot of locations. A lot of Willow. A lot of Willow, a lot of well, Willow looks exactly the same. They didn't even dress it up. They just dropped the old cars you in and said to, fucking roll camera. Yeah. <laughs> good so, to go. that, that same fucking boulder on the outside of turn nine <laughs> is still there. So I, I, to come back to the 250LM question, I think the closest thing is you need something mid-engine that's got more than four cylinders and a, and a, a very pointy front end and a low driving position. But the closest modern cars probably came in GT4, uh -huh. I would have thought, to, to a like 2 an, What about like an older Dino? I've only, driven, really I've only driven a few of those and I just can't believe how slow they are. <laughs> they're, they're quite slow. Uh, you know, the 250 LM yeah. really gets up and goes, whereas the, yeah, the, the Dino I drove, I drove on flares and chairs, you know, when you've got the seats and the, and the wheel out extensions. I mean, just overrated as a driving experience. I mean, they were 240 horsepower like advertised in Europe 170 yeah, I thought so, I mean yeah. they couldn't pull a skin off a rice pudding could they <laughs> yeah. uh, Barry says and I'm going to modify Barry's question give me 30 seconds on the Ferrari F50 and then 30 seconds on the Noble M600 two cars that we don't see much content on so the F50 is the unsung hero of, of that era of Ferrari it's not fetid the way that an F40 is but it's its value now tells you how special they are because they made so few 330 something cars it may be a few more than that but not many cars bearing in mind there are more F40s than there are 993 RSs they made more that's how many F40s there's a lot yeah. of cars the F there's the 1300 F40s how many 1200 1300 there's more yeah. more than that apparently yeah, yeah. so so the thing about the F40 is that the normally aspirated engine, you know, detuned F1 engine, and the manual gearbox shift is the best of any car I've ever driven. If you want a high revving, normally aspirated engine and a gearbox, the t when you rev the thing out in third gear and pull the lever back, what seems to be about half an inch, and it goes straight into fourth, and the revs don't drop, and that thing starts screaming again, that's an unrepeatable experience in a car. Mm. I think it's better than a McLaren F1 for that. Honestly, in terms of noise mm. and drivability, it's a much, I, I love the car, much easier to drive than McLaren F1. It didn't have all the headline numbers. So the, the F50 for me is one of the greats. And everyone I know that's got one secretly just adores it and they and they realize how brilliant it is. It's a fantastic sports car. The next one, Noble M600. Uh, well, Pete, Was that the, the, the modern, the most modern yeah, one? Well, yeah, well, they've, yeah. they've done some since. That's a that, 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 it's interesting. We talk about an F forty. That is a modern F forty in the really? way. So you've got a mid engine V eight with a couple of turbos on it, uh, space basically a load of tubular steel and a shitload of power. That it drives like an F forty. Really? Yeah. So, and it's, so and is, it's that, a, is that the closest someone can? Appear? get to that experience, experience absolutely I, I i would happily have one of those that's a sensational car when you've got it on the 600 horsepower switch and yeah. there's no help there at all there's, and there's no traction yeah. control i might actually to go back the closest you can get to a 250 lm i mean you can't you, you can buy like a superformance gt40 that's awful similar to what they were getting in 65 I think, I, think, I think what happened with the the gt40 they became quite brutal because they had big you know a big heavy engine yeah, yeah. and and quite heavy steering they're a handful the, the the lm is much more elise like it's a very delicate car you're aware that it's low mass you, you drive it in a really delicate fashion i've only driven a gt40 once and I, you know it was a bit more brutal than that frankly the one i drove was fucking terrifying yeah. i mean it was 600 horsepower and it was it was absolutely 
like lunacy. But it's same thing with Cobra is like the secret is like the 289 is the good one. Yeah, that's the secret. If you yeah. actually want to like drive the thing and not die. So M600 is, is one of the greats that's slightly been forgotten about. Really, I think it's a wonderful car. Is they're currently building cars? They, I think, I think they're not homologated in the U.S. right now. No, no. no. Uh, Pete Boutwood, who runs the thing, is a he's a lovely, lovely man. Hello, Pete. That, if you phone him up, he'll make you one. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. he fucking will. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Chris, are you up for having another go in an airplane with Andy Green now that the Bloodhound program is running? No. <laughs> that was a sketchy day, that was. I, I, Andy is another hero. Um, we have an, From that day when we filmed that for Drive, we have probably two hours of, of audio footage from Andy afterwards in having a pint. Which we just, which we never published because there's nowhere to put it. But it, Neil, who who's my right hand man, Neil Carey, um, he he put a voice recorder down and said, "Come on, just talk us through some of this stuff." And he started. We ended up with him talking about how he was over Bosnia in a in a tornado, and he'd lost his radar or something, or he's in heavy clouds, so he had to triangulate where the enemy was. And he was talking about bearings and triangulation points and waypoints and what have you. And, and our, an hour into the story <laughs> Neil and I were just going is not the d- different species <laughs> they're a different species so he's a, he's a wonderful man and actually the way that he simulated the way that Bloodhound will behave was fascinating in terms of G because I got an understanding for what his body's going to go through and I, what Bloodhound achieved over the last <laughs> few weeks is remarkable how, well, how fast did they go? 628 I think it did Yeah, and, it, and it'll go faster just on the on the engine and when they strap the rocket to it, they are in the unknown. You, you can't you can't CAD cam what happens when you ignite a rocket that will go from naught to Mach three in seventy five centimeters. Excuse me. What? Jeez. That's I'm the sorry. performance of the rocket. Not to Mach three in seventy five centimeters. <laughs> what we're being told, yeah. Seventy five centimeters. It's just like like a bullet. A small dick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, where I come from, that's a that's is that a, a big dick? It's a schlong. Five, a schlong. five centimeters but, is two inches. That's a huh? Five centimeters is two inches. Two point yeah. five centimeters. So, so, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's you, not a, you, not a you'd huge dick. You'd be, but, but it's three quarters of a meter. You know, basically. The, the, oh my math. So was once off. once they once <laughs> they once in one LA dickhead. Yeah. Did you say seventy five centimeters? Yeah. centimeters? Oh, you said yeah. seventy five centimeters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for some so, reason I heard those seventy five. So once you strap so. that to the back of something that's already doing six hundred and fifty miles an hour. Nuts. There's there's a there's a I don't know there's a sense of wonder about these land speed records it's just pushing boundaries that don't need to be pushed <laughs> and I, I love it and I, I think the fact that it's open source the fact that the Bloodhound team want to share all the data with people they want to share it with their competitors I'm so glad the thing was sold on eBay three years ago for two three years ago the project ran out of funding so they put it on eBay and, and this bloke so, from Yorkshire fucking bought it and went, I'll fund it. And I th- when it happened, I thought, well, he's going to stick it in his garden and look at it. And two years later, whatever it is, they are on the Hackinson Pan in wow. South Wow, what did he pay Hacken- for it on was eBay? A, I think he paid, a, it was, wasn't a vast, it was, a, I think it was a, less than a million quid. Wow, all right. And, and, he's, and they're, they're in South Africa and they're doing it. Because I never thought we'd see it run. And they, they ran pretty much faultlessly. Up through the you know speed range 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. <laughs> Andy Green had 90 degrees of opposite lock on at 400 miles an hour. Whoa. Go and look at the films. <clears throat> well, why crazy. why do you love it and why do you think we do it? I think I think there are I think you, we are learning stuff. You know you know there, there's there are shockwaves moving under the car that are bending aluminium panels they didn't know about. I think that I think what we're learning and what is useful is probably diminished over time because is are you ever going to travel that fast on land? Probably not. But it's a frontier. The idea of doing a thousand miles an hour in a car, I just, I just love, I love the allure of it. Someone out there is addicted to this and wants to do it and wants and wants to use science to get there. Why wouldn't you? We're being told increasingly these days that we shouldn't do things. The, the, the life is a long list of stuff you shouldn't do. Why do you climb Mount Everest? There's nothing well, up there for you. Yeah, but do you know what? Everyone's doing that now. Yeah. You know, they you see, you see the picture of the fucking traffic jam up there? We were in the, we were in the Himalayas a few months ago <laughs> filming. It's an amazing place, but you should... But anyway, don't don't so. go and climb Everest. <laughs> but um, I, I think it's remarkable. I really do. And I, I, I love the idea of, 
of a of a very very straightforward English fighter pilot, and they are a separate breed. Yeah, they really yeah, are. Yeah. That just sits there and talks calmly about igniting a hydrogen peroxide rocket that's strapped to his anus. It's at hydrogen peroxide. Miles. Yeah, that's what mm. it runs on. Yeah, yeah. Wow, interesting. So it's a batshit project, and it's quite British. I think we've not got much to be shouting about at the moment in my country. You know, we're a little bit forlorn. So anything we can do to wave the flag is <laughs> oh, a good dude. thing. I'll race you to idiocracy, bro. We're fucking there. <laughs> we're, we are there. We are fucking well, let's do there. one more then. Let's do one more. Is there uh, one more before we wrap? Is that is that our one more? Is that the best we I got, think so. Zach? Yeah. I mean, All right. Uh, Chris, you've done some uh, sports car racing. Tell us, tell us a, a crazy racing story. What is your, what is your most, your most extreme? Sorry for using that word, but I wouldn't say extreme. What's, what's, what's the, the the most memorable sports car racing experience? Oh, they're all memorable. The last one is probably the most memorable. But the, I'll, I'll tell you a good one. So you know. I think in 07 I'm doing it or 08 I'm doing a 24 hour race at our favourite circuit in Germany 24 hours Nürburgring and I'm in a Porsche Cup car and my teammate um, is driving along uh, and quite often at the Nürburgring in the gloaming so as the light comes down on the first evening uh, drivers get nauseous in the in, in as the light comes that's quite a common thing mm. and particularly in a section called Tiergarten which is the sort of, after the long straight you go through there's a big dip and your tummy can feel like it's coming out the base of your Ass, you know, and, and you get nauseous. So my, the, we've got radio for the first year that year. So he radios and he goes, "I'm not feeling too good, guys. I'm not feeling too good." It's before the stint's over, so he um, he has to complete the lap, do another lap. He comes in, he's slow, and he comes in, and he's had a disaster. He's he's blown chunks everywhere, oh. and there's chunder down his front. There's chunder everywhere in the car. The car smells like you know a kebab stall at three in the morning. Like, oh. Oh, it's rank, but I don't really mind that. I'm not too squeamish, so I jump in the car. Wipe a bit of chunder off the steering wheel. Everything's fine. Don't get in. No worries at all. I plug in to ready to go. Calms, drink. Oh, there we go. Fine. Come round the hats and back in the first lap. I think oh, have a bit of a drink. So I fire the drinks thing. He's obviously unbeknownst to me chundered down the drinks tube. <laughs> oh, you didn't have your own tube. And he fired. He fi- It fired. It's on a motor. It fired a good mouthful of his chunder into my mouth. So, oh, I'm, so I, I immediately, yeah. so I immediately blew chunks <laughs> on myself, uh, and I had to do an hour and a half or two hour stint just with my own chunder all over me. Oh, and not not drinking anything the rest. No, well after yeah. that the water came through, didn't it? Yeah. Once I'd un- once okay. I'd unplugged it, it was the pace car, wasn't it? I got rid of the slow one. That's oh, Jesus heinous. Wow. But there's all sorts of and I and I and I'll what a fantastic I'll, story to end. On. I can I can um, yeah. There's wow. lo- there's lots like that. It's a pretty grim <laughs> sport. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> That's fucking so gross, dude. I've still got the race suit and it's oh got these massive stains of oh chunder down the Race suit, who cares? You just, uh, you, you shot puke of another person into your own and mouth. It's, and I, and I, I find wow. it very difficult to be sick. I'm not a puker, but the speed with which my body went, get out. Yeah. yeah. It just went, what? Yeah. <laughs> No, remember you drove that shitbox E30 was smelling like gas with gas fucking flowing yeah. all over the whole floor. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, before we actually end it, I just oh, want to ask boy. you one more question. Mm-hmm. You know, you started doing fucking magazine shit, YouTube, get to do some of the drive stuff together, whatever, you know, medium level productions. Now, now you're in the show, right? Are yeah. you having, are you having fun? Sorry, what show are you on? Uh, it's called uh, is, is, BBC Top Gear. You know what I mean? But like, you know, those films, you, you tell me they're five, six days for a basic so like, fucking car review Oh, yeah. Film. So, so let me tell you how it works. You always want the other in life. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're on a big production and you've got everything and you've got, you know, snacks by the by the demand and you've got amazing cameramen, the most talented directors, you've got three massive, huge cameras, you've got a helicopter, you've got all that shit. What you crave is Neil Carey, <laughs> Landau Circuit and a car and some skids and you and JF and Zach and all the people I work with, you crave the other. So you need both in your life. Yeah. So if I only did massive productions... I think it would it would it would frustrate me because they are slow moving because you do have to stop and wait for the guy to lump the massive camera around and it does become frustrating and you and you offset that with two things one you know the end result will be utterly beautiful and and, and stunning and memorable but also because you know that in a few weeks time you will get the chance to go to go and do a YouTube film or something cheaper you know that's faster moving that's more fluid I, I have to have both mm. I can't just do one and, and if I'm and I you know after three weeks of sitting in Wales spending no money at all whinging it is quite nice 
to go to Dunsfold and have this super talented crew around me of 40 people. So you need both. Yeah. But I, but it do, do you know what they can learn from each other? There's a, there's a there's a still a bit of a divide between people that make television and YouTube content producers and they they both view each other slightly sniffily. I think the YouTube generation views TV as being wasteful, slow moving and up itself and I think TV looks at the YouTube world and thinks it's just amateur doesn't pay any attention to detail and is a bit slapdash but they can learn from each other you know TV can become faster moving and and less inhibited by inertia yeah. and I think I think people that make YouTube content could care a bit more about the way they go about it so I th- I think there's there's definitely information exchange there but look I love doing it yeah. of course I do it's the, it's it's the job I never knew I wanted um but I missed I missed the drive days you know don't forget how exciting that was you know, we all came out of fucking nowhere yeah, yeah. and we landed on this weird platform and all of us have made something from it. You know, we've we've all gone on to do something else. And I think what, where the ones that have succeeded were the ones that first realised that YouTube is a stepping stone. Yeah. YouTube is your shop window. I'll never leave it alone. I'll always be grateful for it and I always want to be on YouTube. And in fact, next year, I can't say anything now. I'm going to do more YouTube because I love it. But as a means of earning a living, as your soul... It's, tough. it's it's no, Do you know what? It's nerve-wracking. It undermines you and it makes you feel nervous. Well, you're a, you're a slave to it and you can't ever ask for a raise. I mean, there's no one to ask. There's, no. There's only more volume. There's never more... But, but I, def- I defy you know, anyone so. that does YouTube and becomes one of their creator partners and then has a chance to look at the analytics more not to get drawn into it. Yeah. You get drawn into what you... YouTube requires of you to get more views or to earn more money and you suddenly you turn around one day and go I'm not doing what I thought I was going to do I'm making I'm making films to get viewers yeah I want to just be in a position where I can just do I can basically you know live a bit of a life on YouTube and, and stick stuff up there I think I managed to make that work actually, you did you which did is actually kind of nice yeah. I can go home afterwards well I think a lot of us just saw when you started just moving to one takes we all just thought why the fuck aren't we doing that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, wor- I work at a one little case you know by myself yeah. and it's and I don't need anything or anybody and it's and it's very freeing you know it's yeah. nice it's nice thanks yeah. for coming by dude Thank I'm glad you, you called me it's good to see this you this was excellent Let's well, make I'm, gonna, you... I'm gonna be back in January so we'll do another one then make but it a habit I, then, I, yeah. uh, I appreciate it and bye bye thank you for watching all the crap that we produce yeah, and uh, thank you for participating in the Super Chat. I'm sorry, we, we, we were absolutely overwhelmed with the number of questions, and so I'm sure we'll go we'll go back to your regular car advice next show. Oh, and can I plug that other thing that I do? Which collecting is my, cars my Collecting podcast? Cars, because even though I haven't got a podcast with the scope of this one, we have got a little podcast called Collecting Cars, at Collecting Cars. Uh, and it's it's basically, we go back and, and chat some of the characters that I've met and worked with along the years. So Matt will be coming on that. There's a lot of reciprocal casting yeah, I, goes I on. I really am so overdue for an England trip. We got to okay. coordinate it because I got to see you. I got to go to Caffeine and Machine and see Phil. Yep. I got to see some people at Aston Martin. I got to see uh, the Lotus guys want me to try their new prototype. Oh, look, I need to like a, do a whole loop around the UK and I've been I've been putting it off. There's a hearty welcome in Bristol when you come. Thank you, sir. Nice. All right. Love to see you guys. Harris and RIP to Spencer Cox. We love you forever, brother. You are you are a boss. The Smoking Tire podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally, something to say. Good evening, folks.